Today, we're going to be installing the most stable environment known to man. <laughs> and, and I'm doing this because, one, I'm tired of reloading my studio PC, specifically my Linux side. Even though it's fun to see on stream, I would much rather do that in like a VM or a secondary environment somewhere than tear down my entire production environment, rebuild it as good of a practice that is. I'm kind of over it. So I really, really want to move to a really stable Linux environment that I never really have to reload. Does that exist in the desktop realm of Linux? Well, many would argue no, but today we're going to try and do it more in the desktop realm. Specifically, I'll be using Rocky Linux. And if you're not familiar with Rocky Linux, Rocky Linux is basically CentOS reincarnate. And if you're not familiar with CentOS, it's just like a fork of RHEL. So uh, what Rocky Linux really is, is a one-to-one -one replication of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which you have to pay for. So uh, we don't want to make pay any money because I'm kind of cheap. So, hey, that's what we're doing. So that's what's going on today. So we'll get into it here in a second. Uh, we, yeah, yeah, we're a change of plans on the whole Hyperland there since uh, the last stream. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're switching things around. I thought about doing Arch and I was like, oh, man, I've done Arch so many times on my production machine. And it always, always ends the same way heartbreak so that's why i'm like i want something that is just meant to run davinci resolve and work a hundred percent of the time every time <laughs> and and i know i can set that up in a server realm and i know i'd probably base it on rel so that's why i'm like ah, let's do that now a lot of people are like well you just came from fedora or actually we have fedora installed here yeah, this is going to be a little different. It's going to be a lot different. So, yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. Like, Rocky's really meant for a server environment. It's not really meant for desktop usage. I mean, it, I'm sure you can use it. But at, at, at the core of Linux, it's really meant for desktop usage. So it, it's like going back in time a couple years. So we might have some hiccups. But I... You know, with everything that we have now with flat packs, Nix package manager, and other things, we can use Rocky Linux to really push the boundaries of what stability can be on Linux, I think. Yeah. No, I mean, maybe. Vash, it's, it's very... DaVinci Resolve is very particular about where it likes to work and what environment and it's not just the distro that matters it is also the equipment that matters so yeah yeah that's that's where i struggle so i should probably just move to an nvidia card and then be done with it but i don't want to and if i'm not moving to an nvidia card then well i don't know and we're just going to have to make the AMD one work. But CentOS has some really cool stuff. Opinions on GE's Nobara project. You know, I really love Glorious Egg World's Nobara project. Uh, I, I ran it for a little bit. And I got to tell you that it's well put together. If you're a gamer and really want to give Linux a try, I, I highly recommend Nobara's project. He does a lot of great optimizations. And I can't speak more highly of uh, glorious egg roll. He's just done a great job. So that is why I am looking at um, DaVinci Resolve. And, and NVIDIA is kind of off the table for me just because I'm cheap and I already have a 5700 XT that I kind of prefer. But we're also going to be using proprietary AMD drivers in this video. So this is going to be a weird one. This is going to be a weird one, but at the end of the day, it should give us the most stability possible. And, uh, you know, let's let's first pull up uh, our web. Alternative images. Rocky does post these images. Now, when they first came out, and I was outraged for most sysadmins out there, you don't really uh, just give a little origin story of Rocky Linux real fast. Uh, Rocky Linux was made by the guy that made CentOS, and CentOS was sold off to Red Hat before Red Hat turned it, bastardized it, and, and turned it into something that it's not really ever meant to be. CentOS was supposed to be a one-to-one -one bug uh, 
with RHEL, and that's why everyone in production environments used it, and it had 10 years of support. Look at this planned uh, end of life. 2032. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We don't have to do anything to our system for 10 years. That's kind of insane. And they also have upgrade paths, so after 10 years, you can do it. Uh, here's the spins. You have light workstation, workstation, and KDE, XFC, Mate, and you even can put this on a Raspberry Pi, which, nice, right? That's pretty cool. And then you also have the old uh, Rocky Linux 8 based on RHEL 8. Uh, so I think we'll go with uh, Rocky 9, and that's a 5.14 Linux kernel. So if you remember when that came out, that's kind of the packages and stuff we're working with. But we're going to kind of pip it out a little bit. We're going to see how good of a desktop we can make a stable server environment. Because... I think we can, I think we can do it, but every time I try this, I usually, it's been a minute, it's been a minute since I gone for this, and I know most people wanted to see Arch today, but man, I just really want this to work, and I want something stable, and I want to work in Linux instead of this, this, this operating system. The operating system we do not speak its name so let's uh let's get going i've already pre-downloaded everything so we're not going to sit here and wait around uh as that's just no fun seeing that uh let's just go date modify we got rocky and an amd gpu we'll just toss that in our bin toy right here and once that's over we will reboot and start our install i don't know how this install is gonna go I'd be lying if I was saying I, I wasn't worried. I have a feeling this might be just four hours of pain and suffering, but we don't know. We don't know. I, I really want to just take the shot. <laughs> petition to rename Windows OS to Voldemort to OS. I, I agree. I accept that petition. What's up, goat? Yeah, this is this is going to be a wild one. This is going to be a wild one for sure. But the potential reward for this setup could be big. And I kind of want to see what I can do with some of the like basic tiling. Like once we get KDE and Rocky going, we might get bored. Okay, everyone knows I will get bored. And... I, I want to see what I can do with older packages and older dependencies. Building stuff is kind of out of the realm of possibility, but because a lot of the, the packages have moved on. But there's probably some really basic window managers for Wayland that we might try uh, if if this goes. We'll, we'll see. But that might be later in the stream here. Doesn't Nabarro tweak to work with DaVinci Resolve out of the box? Possibly, but the problem is it's a one-man shop and it does move quite quickly. So that, that can be a, a big issue. And I don't want to just update my system and then all of a sudden have everything break. And that's kind of kind of the state of a rolling release in DaVinci Resolve because you're working with a lot of proprietary drivers and uh, DaVinci Resolve does just a really terrible job of packaging Resolve for Linux. It works, but well, we're just we're just gonna have to go. Let's just see how it goes. You know, it's enough talk. Let's get the install underway right now. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, oh, fingers crossed. I'm well caffeinated, well fed, so we're in a good spot. Oh boy. Oh, and, and sorry for having to push back the stream a day. I actually had to go to my day job. So, yeah, that's what's up with that. Uh, why I didn't stream yesterday, because, and usually I, I'm not here on Wednesdays, but it can flip around sometimes. All right, Rocky Linux, here we go. Rocky Nine KDE. We're just gonna start it. We don't need to. We don't need to test the media. Uh, 
Oh, where's the avatars? Oh, geez. Good point. Good point. Got to get those going. Ah. All right. That. Hmm. Ah, uh, okay. The Connect Damon has crashed. All right, well, fantastic start to the day. Uh, let's see, did that not work? One second. One second, y'all. Connect. Aha! There we go. What's up, Tari? Okay, so this is a Fedora wallpaper, probably from a little bit ago. We will install to the hard drive. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We're going to try a different install on this one. Now, this is based off a of rail, so I'm going to try something a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little bit different. Let's, uh, let's just, we could try a custom one again. I just really hate how Red Hat usually sets up their stuff, whether it's Fedora, whether it's Rel, whether it's Rocky. It's all kind of not my fave, but, you know. Um, let's go PNY and a PNY, and then we probably need to grab an NVMe over here, too. We're going to go custom on this one. because It's not going to know what to do with all this. Now. What we're going to do here. Is we will put our home. A dash home. Okay, that's, that's right. We got this for the root. Oh, well, it actually kind of mapped it all out. I wonder, do we even need this dash boot? Let's see what happens if we just say, oh, well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Nah, it's fine. I think what we'll do is just wipe this out. Okay, great. I think we can reformat, reformat, reformat. And I feel like that would just get us what we need. So this is kind of what we're we're rocking as we are doing right now. This is Fedora root, which kind of feels wrong. Let's go reformat. And hmm, I actually kind of feel like just wiping this one out. And let's wipe this one out. And then we're going to just take this one and put it on boot EFI. I really want to just try and get this EFI partition, this scheme down just a bit better. Um, we're going to add a new mount point. We'll call this one root. We already have boot EFI in this one. Add mount point. So this is the live host. That's fine. And then we'll take our existing one right here. We're going to put this on home. So we got home, root, boot EFI, and I think that's all we really need. Uh, this looks exactly like a Fedora clone. Rocky Linux is a rel based one. Fedora is a rolling release, so the kernel changes. Rocky Linux is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which you have to pay about $180 for for a community edition, which no, no support. If you pay $300, you can actually call into Red Hat and get support for it. That's what Rocky Linux is, is basically Red Hat Enterprise Linux. A lot of people confuse Fedora with being Red Hat Enterprise Linux. No, that's just a playground for Red Hat to mess around in. 
Fedora is not as stable as Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So big difference uh, between the two. And Red Hat Enterprise Linux is designed for workstations as well. They have a spin. Uh, the licensing behind that spin is a little bit different from servers, but it, it's it's way more stable than a Fedora environment, hands down. So that's why we're trying to, instead of going with a rolling release, we're going to be going with a very, very stable release. We'll see how, uh, see if I regret it. Let's see if it takes this scheme. Nah, no, it's not going to. Fine. That is so weird that it just forces me to do it this way, but that's okay. This is not reformatting. This is going to reformat. And then we will also grab a new scheme. We'll just call this one boot. Do one, one G. Can I, can I do that? Yeah. 600 megs. I don't think that needs to be 600. Let's change, change that to 200. Let's change this one. All right, fine, fine. And then we'll just add another boot. So that should be exactly what Fedora wants. See if it overwrites my stuff. I don't think it will. Should be fine. All right, let's do it. Done. Uh, it wants a swap partition. No, we're gonna. We're fine on that. Accept changes. I don't know on that CK2. I've never tried to use a COPR on Rocky. I'm going to say probably not. I, I just don't see that being a thing. All right, we have that uh, K dump. We're going to disable that. Don't really care about it. And we're good. Let's begin. Yeah, so that that's the thing. This is the KDE spin of Rocky. So if it works, the, the, the beauty of doing it this way, guys, I know a lot of people are like, wait, wait, you're using such an old package as an old distribution. But the beauty of doing it this way is if it works, it will just always work. You don't have to worry about updates. You don't have to worry about, oh, God, is the next kernel going to give me a security flaw? Or, you know, uh, is it going to be stable? Is it going to mess up DaVinci Resolve? There's so many different moving pieces with your rolling releases that it just inevitably causes more headaches and doing it this way means once I get it set up and if I can set it up in the fashion I really want, it will just always be perfect. And y'all know how much I like to change stuff, but I feel like with this kind of thing, Rocky Linux, I feel like it would put guardrails in so I don't break my system as much. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I might just break it more, but it's worth a shot. I mean, not very many people ever go with a really long LTS like this. You know, a 10-year distribution. That's how long the support is. So we got all the way to 2032. Uh, oh, why did I do manual instead of auto? The reason I did manual instead of auto is because uh, I have a whole bunch of home files and in my home folder, I wanted to make sure that I I pulled that in. And in my home folder itself is like a separate LVM that is set up a little weird. This may just die. It may not like this configuration. I know Fedora didn't like when I configured it this way. And I had to just install it all on one drive and then go back through FS tab and 
manually change it. So if this dies, um, I don't fault Rocky for this because I have a really funky partition scheme with like eight different drives in my system. Uh, but in Fedora, this did not work because of my weird scheme. But most people would just click a drive, hit auto, and then move on with their lives. Uh, so this was just me being me. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Debian or Debian testing for my production machine. Vash, it, you know, Debian testing is pretty stable. However, I got burned, I think, in Debian 10 testing where there was a bug in the testing branch and it kind of it went into feature lock because it was about to release Debian 10. And I think that was uh, Bullseye. Anyways, uh, I don't know if I'd recommend it because I had that experience because it was... That bug kind of hung around for like three months until uh, the, it finally released and then I could update to the, the full release. Or no, I think I just said screw it and moved to Sid. But yeah. <laughs> I did find that because testing does just get locked sometimes. <laughs> I know, Ash... A Ashlyn and Harry and Chad are like, what the hell? Oh, where, where's Sousa? <laughs> we might we might switch to Sousa later in the stream, as that would uh, a lot of people don't realize Sousa's an enterprise uh, distribution. So, Open is just the community driven fork of uh, the Sousa Foundation, I think it is. But Sousa has its own enterprise Linux kind of spin of it and uh, I've, I've never used it really not I've never seen it in business to be honest with you I've seen Red Hat all over the place and oh man I you know I've seen more CentOS than Red Hat to be honest probably just from licensing no I, I really like Hyperland it's just I want something stable Hyperland is not yet. It will be. It will be. They'll, they're they're really pushing forward, and I think it's gonna really turn into something kind of amazing. But uh, yeah, did this just lock up? Oh, son of a ah! Problems already. I knew. I knew. I should have just put it on that drive and then. Done my swap. Uh, how do I want to approach this? You know what? Maybe we, maybe, maybe we don't take my home partition. Maybe we just wipe everything out. Nuke and pave to an extreme. I mean, I'm tempted. <laughs> Someone on Nixo is going to debate you on the title. Hmm. <laughs> you guys really want to? I. You guys are going to eventually wear me down, and we're going to do that. You're gonna. You just got to keep at it. It's like when you guys goaded me into doing Gen two like two years ago. You're like, do Gen 2, and then I, I did, and I was like, okay, well, this was fun. And then, uh, yeah, the rest is history. I know, we could just remap home later. Yeah, we'll probably just do that. Shows that Rocky Linux is actually there. No way did that install. Should we try to boot to it? Let's try and boot to it. Really? No, 
You think it worked? I think it just got to the bootloader. Let's see. I bet you it crashes. It'd be hilarious if it kind of halfway installed. <laughs> I shouldn't try this. I shouldn't do this. This is not smart. <laughs> so it crashed midway through, but it kept the progress? Nah, it's it's not going to be overwrite because I'm naming the user the same thing. That's what's up. Oh. That fingered my password. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accept. Is this going to work? Really shouldn't work. Huh. Okay. Let's go. It felt like it. Oh. Oh, no. Did I forget my password already? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no, I forgot. Uh no. No. Oh man. What? I it's literally four four digits. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> ah. Uh, I think we got some shenanigans going on here. I'm just gonna nuke and pave. That was that was silly. Okay. I I know that's why I made it four digits so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Try DT, maybe that's my password. What's old distro tube up to, man? I hadn't seen he hadn't popped up in my feed in a minute. My feed's been jacked though on YouTube. Yeah, I think I do want to I think we're just gonna nuke and pave, guys. It's been I've been taking this thing over and over to all these different things. I, I moved my home folder probably six times now that's a lot like moving moving it six times is just that's excessive like <laughs> i mean i have i have uh i made distro hoppers look like like nothing it was like yeah it's a new day you know it's it's a tuesday let's just go ahead and uh switch distros <laughs> So let's let's move it. Well, that was uh yeah, that was my doing. So I I take full ownership of the bomb on this one. Although it kind of makes me want to do like a special partition scheme. Now that we're going to just wipe everything out, I feel like uh let's do something special. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to keep it. I kind of want more of a minimal setup. You know? I do like KDE, though. I think, like, for for a truly a Windows user coming to Linux, you just can't get anything better than KDE uh, for a lot of it. Although some people, like, if you... For a more power user, advanced user, I'd say KDE. For like a basic user, like a someone that just needs a couple things, I'd say Mint is really good. But I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, uh, let's go there. Let's grab these PNY drives again. Uh, where is the PNY drive? Oh. These are some terrible SSDs I have. But I wonder. Let's. Oh, that's a bad idea, Chris. Oh, no. You don't even want to think what I'm doing right now. 
Well, what kind of automatic does it give me? Reclaim space. Just delete it all. What did it choose? Let's see what it chose. All right. That's pretty much what we did. Yeah, that's almost exactly the configuration we had. Why, why is it doing that, I wonder? Huh. Now, let's, we need to delete these. I feel like we just, let, we're going to do it manually. I don't, I just don't trust it. I feel like we need to we need to get it going the proper way. Uh and where's my So we just have these standard saddle ones. I do want to grab my MVME though. Right and throw my boot on it. Yeah, sure, whatever. So this is what we have, but let's go custom again. Hmm. Yeah, XFC is good. It's just minimal. Uh, let's go. Let's just go LVM. It's thin provisioning. I don't think I've ever used LVM thin provisioning. All right. And then let's create a new drive. Oh, this is just, hmm. I wanted to bundle them together. I think Ubuntu is really one of the only distros where you can actually combine drives. But let's rescan disks real fast. Okay, selected disks and bootloader, boom. That's good. Okay, I guess it's just going to set it this way, but then it's not going to reformat it. I have uh, whatever. We're just going to say reformat everything. Just format it all. I don't care. We're going to label this one EFI, though. Let's let's actually label our partitions. Make it easy. We'll label this one boot. Reformat. Boot. Why is it not taking my... Oh, we'll not apply it until you... Okay. That's so strange. It's like just discarding all my changes. Huh. Oh, well. I'm not going to mess with it. We'll just... uh yeah, we'll just delete this, whatever. We'll just put it all in OneDrive and fix it in post, like we did the other way. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll just take those off. We'll just do this one. We'll just say, do it how you want to do it. Um, done. Reclaim. Delete all. Reclaim. And then we'll just fix it after. I, that's how we did it in Fedora. I just wanted to see if uh, I could do it differently here. Again, Ubuntu is like the only one I've seen do it properly. As much as I crap on Ubuntu, I do. Uh, let's just disable KDump. We have all that. Um, 
And then just to make sure, can we view full disk summary? Okay, that's fine. I don't know why it keeps doing that, but whatever. Okay, this should work great. Everything looks good. US, blah, blah, blah. Let's just, let's just get through the install. Oh my gosh, eight terabyte M2. My goodness. Ooh, so I'm so cheap. I'm using like these PNY one terabyte drives I got on sale for like 20 bucks. <laughs> They're just, <laughs> and, I, and then I created like an LVM so I could create a two terabyte like traditional SSD from like, which PNY is not a great company when it comes to SSD drives. Uh, I just was like, eh, it's fine. Yeah, so Rocky Linux is interesting. It's uh, basically Red Hat Enterprise clone, bug for bug, amazing, created by the original creator of CentOS. And CentOS is not. Like, we already talked about how much it sucks now, uh, where Rocky Linux will be this. So it'll be the most stable if... I can get everything working the way I want it to work. And I think I can. I really do. I think with a lot of the tools and how much Linux has come in the desktop era in the past couple of years, like you have Nix and the Nix OS package manager that we could probably put in here. We will have to set SE Linux to permissive mode. But man, I mean, there's so many cool things you can do with an old stable release to really make it kind of awesome. Hey, what's up, Don? <laughs> stable. Nothing is stable around you, Chris. Truer words have never been spoken, man. Or have been spoken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More caffeine. More caffeine. Oh, man. This is going to be wild. This is going to be a wild one. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is... This is going to be interesting. I think I'm going to drop to TTY, fix our drive issues right out of the gate. Do I want to go with an LVM drive? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. We'll find out here shortly. Oh, that's weird. Huh. Thought it was Windows there for a minute and put it in the center. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Oh, I wore my art shirt today. <laughs> I know, I like to change my mind a lot. It's where growth happens, though. Change. Never be never be afraid to change things. All right. KDOM disabled. We'll accept our license agreement. Uh, and we'll finish the config. This should churn away for a couple seconds. Spit me to the desktop. And then we're going to do that. Start pimping it out. I Someone mentioned this earlier. Why is the keyboard layout? Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry. One second. We got some... Mm. Stable. Most stable ever. Uh, sorry. I think we need to get to US. One second. Just changing my keyboard layout. I don't want to get stuck. Stable. 100% stable. Yep. Okay. Woo. 
<laughs> Windows can be stable. It depends on, on the user. Much like Linux. KD uh, Connect Damon. All right. What do we have for our app? All right, let's let's just Okay. We got we got to fix a few things here just to make this a little bit more my speed. Um uh ah, pseudo DNF update. Let's just see if there's any I feel like there's going to be some bug fixes and updates sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say this feels a little bit, a little bit on the jank side. So, so far. But again, Rocky Linux is meant for a server distribution of Linux. It's not really designed for the workstation. So I do anticipate a little bit of bugs here and there. But we're gonna strip out a whole bunch of stuff to make it, to make it stable. So we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Hey, it already has the EPEL packages. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, it should make stable Linux. I don't know if I'd be the guy to do a stable Linux. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's awesome. Try NixOS. How you liking it, ML? I really want to go to Nix OS at some point. But for the studio PC, the reason why I'm choosing this one today is one, for stability, two, for DaVinci Resolve. That's really the big reason here, is I really want to use DaVinci Resolve in Linux. Don't really care about anything else. I just want DaVinci Resolve in Linux so I don't have to use Windows. And DaVinci Resolve is kind of problematic, especially on AMD hardware on a lot of different systems. It's just buggy, to say the least. All right, that's good. Um, let's fix a couple things real fast. Um, let's just purge. Is DNF purge a command? No. I think it's just remove. Uh, let's get rid of Discover. Or did Discover ever become okay? I don't remember. I really always hated Discover. I always felt like it bombed out on me. Yeah, let's just remove it. Um, also KDE Connect. Uh, that didn't actually do anything, but let's do a list install. Oh yeah, you don't have to do the dash dash installed. Uh, let's grep connect. All right. So for this one, let's do a sudo DNF purge KDE connect. So we were having, God bless. Come on. Got, got my head in the Debian space today. Let's just remove KDE connect. It was already having problems a lot on Rocky. So let's uh, switch that out. And then the next up, let's just look at Discover. Plasma Discover, flat packs, Notifier, Package Kit. I think we leave it, actually. I think that's a mistake, probably removing it. What else do we have in here? What is up with our Start menu? What in the... All right. That is just... Bonkers. Why is this in the middle? What is happening? What? Let's go dark, I guess. It does feel snappy, at least. Um, I also like to change this. Start with empty. so weird I've never seen that uh, 
Okay, Discover's okay-ish now. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So the 5.23, this is pretty old. That And that's to be expected. That's why we're not really doing much with it. I kind of wanted, a again, a stable environment. Stable environment equals older packages. You don't get a stable environment on new packages. You just don't. This looks so weird. What in the hell is going on with my start menu? Let's reboot just to see if that's like a bug. Yeah, Kubuntu is pretty stable. I think... But what I want to try to do here is... I, what I really want to do is try and make the stable environment have all the packages and have all the new hotness that I want, but still using the stable base. Is that possible? I don't know. I might be asking too much, but... I don't know. What the hell is up with the keyboard layout down there? Yeah. What? Why am I authenticating the mount? That should just mount automatically. What is going on? Man. This is not feeling stable at all. Why is this in the middle? What is up with these settings? Wacky. What a wacky config out of the box. I mean, again, Rocky Linux is really meant to be a stable. I couldn't emphasize that enough. <laughs> meant to be a stable server. <laughs> Linux spin. Hmm. What do we have? Is there a window rule? Can we just set this to defaults? Why is the default so jank? Oh, this is like 5.23. So this is old. This is a very old version. But even still, I never saw KDE act like this. It's just, it's just acting strange. Window behavior, title bar actions. Um, I bet it's window placement, maybe. Yeah, it could be Wayland too. This is an earlier version of KDE, one of the first iterations of Wayland. Huh. What if we uh, take this? Oh, what happened? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? No. No, no, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> ah! I just want to drag that. What was it? We push that on the top. There we go. All right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. There we go. Get that at the top. Kind of go that direction with it. Um. Huh. I think what we'll do is we'll just start ripping stuff out. Right, chat? That always, that always fix, fixes stuff in Linux. When you have a problem, just start removing everything. All right, and then let's just, ah, no, oh. what's the command? There it is. Aha. All right. So stable. <laughs> Better than stable. Um, so let's do a DNF list installed. And let's start looking through some of these packages. 
So we do already have a whole bunch of Xorg installed. Zenity, Yum, Yelp. Let's just let's just start with a pseudo DNF remove. And then we're just gonna find stuff in here as we flip through and go, okay, we don't need that, don't need that, and then just toss it on the fire, so to speak. I feel like this is the way to get it done. Um Mm -hmm. I also kind of want to just see what packages they tossed into this distro spin. I feel like we probably should just remove SDDM. I think this version of SDDM is like not the best. We can just bypass it too. Once we hit plasma, I imagine we'll start seeing a bunch of garbage that we need to remove. Plasma Breeze, uh, it's actually not that bad. What do we have for KDE up here? There's just going to be a lot of libraries. Contact, ugh. Yeah, here's all our KDE stuff, and you all know how much I love that. Uh, let's just remove like K mail and then contact that should remove. I don't know. They're, they're independent. We do have them. We do have them. <laughs> uh, although, you know, I really have been digging Neo Vim and I just did a uh, lazy Vim started moving to lazy Vim and I've really enjoyed its configuration as well. Um, just scroll back. What is it? Just trying to think where we want to start cutting the fat, so to speak. I guess when we look at this, let's, let's just take a peek. Kate. Like, what is up with this? It's just that how it's designed right here is just kind of driving me bonkers. And I don't think we can even use a Wayland. Do they have even have? I bet they have Sway, right? Let's just let's just ah, let's just do a DNF search Sway. That's probably in here. I remember I didn't particularly care for Sway, but I just want to see if they have a tiling window manager in Rel Rel Nine. I don't know if they do. They probably... No, I don't think they probably would include it. Oh, yes. Enable push-ups. I'll take a look. Yeah, no fountain. So there's no sway here. Hmm... So if it's not set up correctly, what if we do this? This is going to break things, but that's okay. I feel like it's already kind of broken. And when it's kind of broken, you know, it's like a, a bone. You don't want to fracture a bone. It's just best to break the entire thing. So let's look at, let's just grep KDE. Let's see what we have. So, you know what? I don't see a package here. So, unlike most distributions, KDE gets bundled into like a like plasma package, like plasma workspace, maybe, or plasma desktop is probably the package. So, that makes me wonder. We could probably just uninstall plasma desktop. I just don't feel like it's, let's do it. Let's nuke. Nuke and time. Well, not totally nuking, but come on. Give me a TTY. It's not give me. Oh, there we go. So um, let me, let me just set font real fast. Uh, Pseudo DNF install. 
Uh, what? What are you doing to me, console? I guess we're just gonna have to work with gibberish. So stable, so stable. Um, we got sudo dnf install. Terminus fonts. Probably font terminus. Uh, DNF search terminus. No, DNF search term font. Okay. Grep terminus term. No. No font. Okay, well. All right, let's go user, let's ls user l. I'm, I'm trying to get our fonts to a decent size. Uh, lib, and then I want to say keyboard, kernel, no, that's kernel. Ah, oh, geez, set font. Help, where are we getting this from? Set font needs user lib kbd star. So if we look at that, kbd console fonts. Why do they not have anything worth a damn? And as a default font, it drives me crazy. I wish every single Linux server install or any Linux distribution for that matter, why don't you just have like Terminus fonts by default? It drives me bonkers. Set font, lat 9w, we're just gonna get something that doesn't suck maybe. 9w16, that did not work, did not like that one. Let's go lat two, dash terminus 16 a little bit better sorry do we not have anything higher than a 16 point come on oh here we go there's an iso 22 that would give us something bigger set font and then you guys can read oh i bet this looks like hot garbage but Let's go 12x22 should give us. I mean, it's not the prettiest thing, but at least you guys can kind of read it. Good night. What about sun? I really hate this font. <laughs> this is turning into just a complete train wreck. <laughs> oh my Gosh, uh, sun 22, no. Oh, gosh. Is there not a terminus font? <laughs> Just all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All for stability here, guys. Okay, well, you guys can see it. We're, we're moving on. DNF, remove. I don't know what's up with that USB 3 port. Disabled by hub, or whatever. Um, we're just not going to have... Uh, the screen's just not going to make sense. We're just going to have to do it from memory. Um, let's just get rid of Plasma Desktop. Oh, jeez. All right, we got rid of Plasma Desktop. Um, let's just get rid of... SDDM. Goodbye. Uh, let's just do a DNF remove. Can you do like a global hotkey like plasma star? Hey, look at that. All that works. Let's just get rid of all that. Goodbye. It does accept wild cards. I don't know if we need any of that, but probably not. What about KDE star? Yeah, that doesn't look like it's very important either. Goodbye. Um. Hmm. 
I choose death on this. It made me mad. I was just like, all these settings are wrong. We're just going to flush everything. <laughs> ah, ah, so much better. Ah, see? It's nice and stable. Now let's just... It, do they even have NeoFetch in the official package? Oh, they do. Nice. Ah, there we go. Perfectly stable. As it should be. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, try using DNF group list. Ah, that's a good, good one. All right, let's try that. Let's go DNF group list. So we have... Oh! Plasma workspaces. Can you do that? Like, uh... Something like that. I don't think... Oh, yes, you can. Look at that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. Okay. What else we got? Oh, sweet. All right. Available. Environment groups. Environment. Okay. Okay. So we don't have really anything installed anymore. We have, oh no, still have a thousand packages. Although don't know if it's counting. Let's reboot. I wonder if it'll even, it should boot to TTY. That's a pretty cool command. Well, I think we removed quite a bit of packages, so I think it should just spit us to a TTY and then we can just set our font. Although I do want to get like a, a terminus font of some sort. Oh, you know, we should have done a system D set environment, but oh well. Um, let's just do a NeoFetch. How many packages we got now? Still a thousand. Okay. So there's still a good bit of stuff installed here. Um, so here's our group list. So we could actually install stuff from here. Uh, does it even have a task SEL? I don't think it does. That's a Debian thing. But it would be cool. Now nah, there's no task SEL. I didn't think so, but I would be... I was kind of just interested to see. Now, server with GUI is going to install GNOME, and I'd rather walk over hot coals than use GNOME as my daily driver. Hmm. Just trying to think. Probably XFCE. Let's try XFCE for a second. Uh, I know y'all were like, I don't know about that, but let's do a group install and then just grab XFCE. And it might be a good springboard for us. Although XFCE is only XORG, right? That's not Wayland at all, if, I, if memory serves me correct. Yeah, I think I think we're moving to Xorg now. Wayland is kind of hot garbage on Rocky Linux, I'm thinking. Judging by all the errors and problems we were having, I'm like, uh, I'm going to move. <laughs> Let's just move. Now, since we got XFCE installed, do you think that actually... Let's do a group list. It does say XFCE. Did it install like light DM, I imagine? Let's let's take a peek. Hmm. 
this is totally not the way to install any of this, by the way. Um, did it go SDDM? No. GDM, maybe? Yeah, it's installed GDM. Weird. Uh, not, it's fine. I don't mind GDM. It's like Gnome's des uh, display manager. What a weird blend. All right, let's reboot and see what we get. Yeah, we could do StartX. I just want to see if the display manager actually was enabled and how the group install works with DNF. This one might be an interesting an interesting tidbit here. Whether or not that works or not. I imagine it'll kick us to TTY. Oh, okay. All right. What's this look like? Well, it looks like gnome to me. Okay. What the hell? All right, let's see. There's that's not XFCE. Is there where? Mm -hmm. Where are you? It's been so long since I used GNOME, I can't even find the darn down here. Oh, there it is. Okay, XFCE session. Let's try XFCE session. Okay. Oh, good night. I hate this. But not all is lost. Let's convert my... Oh, man, we're just... Oh, this is not at all how I wanted any of this to go. That's okay. We're going to go a complete completely different way. Oh. Rock steady. Uh it will be. It will be once we're finished. I know y'all don't see it now, but I I see it in my mind's eye. We're we're getting it. Um <laughs> oh, Okay, okay, okay. What if let's move to BSPWM and Xorg and then I kind of want to change a few things about that old I had a project that I was using for like a year or so and I really love it and it's a great interface it's Xorg but you know it worked and it was stable I just don't know how DaVinci Resolve is going to like it but you know what that's fine <laughs> We're compiling new versions of Rocky's outdated software, probably. But the idea is to stay at a server level, which Rocky is great at a server level. And then we're just going to tack on just what we need on top of it. I think that'll work good. I think that'll be great. So let's uh probably Ubuntu Titus was the closest I got to that. Um we first need to fix our FS tab. Uh is there a GDM as well? Let's just switch to super user for a second. Let's go to ATC. We need to change some stuff. GDM custom Willem enable false. Um, one second here, we're going to change this setting, but we also, is there an internet browser in this text browser? Wow. Okay. Yep. Uh, one, one more second. Uh, let's go new tab. 
I don't think I've ever used XFC uh, East console. They do have a new tab, right? Yeah. All right. Let's just install Firefox for a second. Uh, ESR Firefox. Okay, maybe just Firefox. Version 102 Firefox. So that's relatively new, right? Yeah, I don't know what got into me last night where I was like, you know what? Let's just let's just make life hard and not use Arch <laughs> on this one. I don't know why. I am so regretting that decision right now. That's not gonna be my last regret on this. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know on that. There's just some weird weird packages here. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and throw RPM Fusion on here. We'll also grab, um, I think it's EPEL Extended Release or something, and expand DNFs packages as, as best as we can. Um, and then from there, we should be good. Uh, let's just... Install RPM Fusion. Oh, let's see. Graphical setup. Who uses a graphical setup? Oh, my. Shoop. That should be what we need. Rail or compatible like CentOS OS. Let's just uh, paste this guy in here. Yep, yep, yep. We're just going to grab those guys. Uh, I want to say install EPEL RHEL 9. Let's just see if we have EPEL on here as well. I want to say this would get us there. Just do EPEL latest release 9 RPM. And what I'm doing here is just expanding what the package manager can grab. Okay, it's already installed. So we're good. So now if we do a DNF update, we should be able to grab a lot more packages. Great. Greatness. And now let's just do auto login for GDM. Uh, well, actually, we're not going to do the auto login just yet. Now that I'm looking at it, because we still got a little bit to fix. So let's just grab our Vim ETC FS tab. Bam. Now we are. I did create that LVM mapper right there. Hmm. Okay. Daemon auto login equals true auto login username. Usually you need a session to go with that, Omar. Yeah, we'll have to specify a session because we're going to have XFCE on top of it. So we need to specify which session it grabs. If you only have one session... It, 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 like XFCE or GNOME or KDE, like most installs, that, that'll work just fine. But obviously, I'm going to have multiple sessions because we will be moving to a window manager in, in Rocky Linux, of all things. <laughs> uh, right now, just debating on how I want to do my LVM, um, LVM setup. I want to say we could do, yeah, PV list, I think it was, or PV display. 
All right, we got uh, three physical volumes right here, but none of those are really being utilized. I don't even see those physical displays over here, right? Let's go LV display. Uh, super user, yeah. We have the root partition currently slated at 70 gigs. Oh my gosh, full partition ski. Killing me, Smalls, killing me. Um, okay, well, we're going to have to get rid of this home partition right here. And we will change this up a bit too. Um, thinking. One second. Does it even show? Okay, here's this one. Oh, this is going to end in tragedy. I know it. That's okay. So this one, we're just going to put it home. Um, I want to say it was an XFS partition scheme. Defaults. Zero, zero. Uh, <laughs> that seems wrong to me, but... Maybe. Let's save that out. Uh, sudo BOKID. I'm just checking real fast. I'm making sure that that. What was that? How was EXT4? Good thing I checked it, huh? Okay. EXT4. There we go. Now, this is definitely not going to be good what if i do a mount a okay that did work technically let's just reboot we'll see if it boots <laughs> yeah this is this is going to be uh an interesting interesting ride i got i have like a something like sketched out in my mind of how I'm going to make this look and, and recover from basically just starting from a server install and making it stable and then tossing DaVinci Resolve on there with proprietary AMD drivers. I think it'll work still. I think it'll work even better than, than I had first envisioned. So yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm okay with this. It's going to be fine. Going to be fine. All right. I imagine this is just not even going to allow me to log in. Okay. Yeah. That worked, actually. Really? Huh. Oh, that's right. I had all those MS-DOS configurations in my home folder. Cool. All right. Yeah, we're we're in business. We got everything. That worked a lot better than I thought it would. Um I got to fix these fonts though. Um This is like the old Windows fonts. Oh my gosh. It's terrible. Oh gosh. Hmm. Let's install Kitty. Let's get that going. That's in there. Okay. And we also have our fonts. We have all that. I think at this point, we come into our build directory. Do we have uh, Ubuntu Titus? I know this is not Ubuntu, but... Ooh, you know what? Yeah. 
Yeah, let's just get clone. Ubuntu Titus, uh-huh. We're going to just use this as a sort of a base. It was like my last Xorg style project. And we're just going to change this on the fly. Um, let's grab some NeoVim. Hey, it is a 8.0. I didn't realize EPEL had 8.0 a NeoVim. That's nice, I think. Is that... Wow. Okay. I got to fix this darn font. Oh my gosh. What do we got? Oh, uh, sorry. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to fix this. Uh, usually I do like a Meslo LGS. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. A little bit better, right? Uh, Cascadia Cove, or code. Yeah, Cascadia is pretty good. I still like Meslo just a hair better, but Cascadia is pretty awesome. That's what I use on uh, my Windows PowerShell, actually. I kind of jump all over the place. Okay. So what we're going to do here is just grab this file. And what we're going to do is we're going to just start clearing stuff out. Um, I don't even think we need any of this or SDDM. We will need X resources, and if I'm looking at it, uh, da, 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 da. what was it? Was there X resource X Nord and X resources for LL? Um, X resources X Nord. It's all there already. So all my configs technically should be there. So the big thing is grabbing these modules, um, which I don't know how much of this is actually going to be there. So we're going to yank that. I think most of it will be there, though. This is a little bit older project of mine. Let's see how much is missing. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. That's a lot of missing. Um, mm. Yeah. That's okay. That's a fine, 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 fine. We will, uh, we'll, we're going to make do. Uh... Let's uh let's see how much Nix can help us. Oh man. Oh man. All right, let's go Nix. I don't know on this one. Starting to have some doubts. I forgot how limiting the packages are for this. Um Nix isn't going to work with SE Linux. Yeah, it's enforcing right now. We need to set that permissive. Set SE Linux permissive. Actually, let's just go disabled. I just am not even caring about that. Disable rel. Rel 9, which is what Rocky uses. SE Linux is now supported on RHEL 8 and 9. Thinking, I think you have to use Grubby. So install Grubby, set SE Linux to zero. Reboot. Okay. Mm. 
It was Grubby already installed? Yeah, it was already installed. All right, cool. So we'll do that. We'll install Nix and then see what Nix can... Oh, man. Running this much in Nix from a system standpoint... I mean, technically, it should work. <laughs> Just use NixOS at this point. I mean, you could. <laughs> I think you definitely could. But the big thing here is I do want that stability. And the base system itself, like... A good example of a project that uses like a rel based system as its core base would be uh, XCP and G, which is a virtualization uh, you see a lot in business. Uh, you have some other projects too that have a really solid base based on this. So, I mean, yeah, it feels a little tacked on here, but you got to realize you're isolating out those packages into its own little environment. And then at its core, the system itself is almost, you can't break it in theory. No, I have never tried NixOS directly. I've just used their package manager a ton. Oh, we do need to install Starship to remind me to do that. But in the meantime, let's go. This is disabled. So I bet you Nix will install beautifully. Or not. Can we just do a super user? I don't think you can, can you? No. Huh. Oh well, it's fine. We can just do single user Nix. This is not turning into the most stable release ever. <sighs> oh, did that? Yeah, I don't think that's what we want, though. Let's just install... Install Nix packages... Package manager. So this is multi-user. Here's single user mode. Okay. So then we grab this, paste that in. No, it's still running into problems with Nix. Let's just do a... Maybe, maybe, uh... I think we can just curl that, actually. No? No such file or directory. Hmm. It says it's just not seeing a lock file. Um. Let's just do. A, we'll just make the path, I suppose. I don't know why that would bomb out. I don't think that'll fix it, though. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I forgot I did trash CLI. Just in case, I, I removed so much from the CLI that I always make sure I force myself to use trash CLI. Uh, let's go remove sudo... All right, now 
it should give me a different error, probably. All right, permission denied. Need to ch own the file. Seven seven seven. Nobody uses seven seven seven. All right, let's take a look at the directory. I want to say. So we have this. Everything looks to be owned by me, except for Titus. <laughs> All right, ch own. Let's just do a recursive ch own of Titus and run it again. Okay, yeah, that was it. Yeah, she never used the ch uh, ch mod seven seven seven. That's not not good. All righty. So this installs finished. Uh, ensure the environment is set. You can either log in again or just type this. Let's just type that. And then Nix. Yeah, great. Greatness. So what we're going to do here now is slowly work through our BSPW. Oh, dude, this is just going to be such a wacky install. But it will be stable. After I finish, mark my words, <laughs> it will be stable uh, to the point where people are going to be like the underlying how we got there is going to be looking, man, I feel bad for anybody watching this stream. This is just entertainment value at this point, but I think it'll be good. It's going to be very stable, very stable, super stable. And <laughs> we'll be stable one day, one day. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, let's go back to our build directory uh, and go into Ubuntu Titus. And what I'm going to do with this one is let's vim install sh and I think we already have Nordzy cursor. Yeah, hey, we'll just install that too. Install Brave Browser. We're gonna probably have to do Brave through Nix OS as well. We're gonna get rid of the graphical polybar. Let's take a look at that scripts. See if there's anything weird Debian-ish in there. Uh, it's just is fixing the interfaces. That's actually that's actually a pretty good script. I don't think I even wrote that. I think that was somebody else. All right. So now if we look at install, this is what we have. And I think we're going to grab a new tab. Let's just install Starship. Starship. Where are you at, uh, Linux? All right, uh, auto jump. Let's fix that too. Perfect. Okay, it's coming together. It's coming together. Most stable environment in the world is getting built right here before your eyes. We're going to be leaning heavily on Nix. <laughs> like, very, very heavily. 
I think we might have more packages installed through Nix than we will DNF. All right, let's first get brave. We're going to grab uh, Nix ENV. Boop. Hmm. Nick's environment not found. What was it? Not that, right? Wonder why the Nick's uh maybe I need to reboot before it shows. I don't know. Let's just grab Brave. This is totally gonna bomb out my storage. We gotta fix the storage too. Oh, God. Or we get too much further installing packages. We're going to fill up all that whole route. Um, before we get crazy. So right here, we have the boot partition. We have this one. Oh, that is not mounted, right? RL Live. It's the LVM and... Okay. Shows that the size of this one is 230. So, yeah, this should be just a simple LV extend. All right, great. Great. We are looking so good now. I, I'm feeling a lot better. This is really coming together. It may not look like it just yet, but it's really coming together. So we need to get rid of this guy right here. And I want to say it was LV. A remove? Remove? I think we can just do that, right? Are you sure you want to remove active? Yeah. Home removed. Great. And just to make sure, I probably should have done that before I looked at it, but gone now. All right, great. Um, so we've removed that logical volume. So now we can just do an LV extend. And before we get too far, let's just install TLDR. I can never remember the syntax for this one. So we'll do an LV, TLDR, LV extend. And what we're doing right here is just extending our root partition. Um, and this is not quite what I wanted to do. So I, well, I think that'll work. Let's do LV extend sudo lv extend dash dash size add whatever's free 100% free and then also resize the underlying file system and this is going to be dev map or root or whatever the hell that was What was it? Dev mapper root. Where are you at? That's the swap. There it is. So that right there. We should be able to just bloop. Oh dude, we ran into this last time, didn't we? When we did an LVM extend. I can't remember what I Fixed. How do I fix that? LV extend. Dash dash help. Oh, that's right. Instead of using dash dash size, it's actually dash L plus percent. So it's an incorrect TLDR get a, got this wrong. So it should actually be dash L. 
like that to extend it all. So then if we do an LSB OK, we have all that. Disk free huge. Perfect. So now our root partition has 209 gigs free. So we just added 150 gigs to our root. And we are looking good. Perfection. So now we can go wild installing stuff. I was just afraid we were going to run out of stuff on our root drive. And I wanted to fix that before I forgot about it. So now we need to start grabbing other packages, but I think if we just go like brave, does that pull up now? Let's just go brave, brave. Hmm. And my Nix is not showing up. Do I need to add something to Nix when I do the install? I think I hadn't rebooted this yet, though. Yep, yep, yep. All right, cool. Uh, let's give this a little bit of a reboot. We have all this. Now we're just trying to get these packages on our system, and then we can kind of pimp out the this so it doesn't look so archaic and then we'll auto boot into that and kind of set up our environment and then we'll do davinci resolve the proprietary amd drivers and we'll be very stable yeah we're about to switch over to kitty i hate xfce's terminal uh, but it's mainly just getting this uh, all set back up exactly how I like it. And it just is a little odd right now. It's in a weird spot right now. But trust me, here in like 30 minutes to an hour, we should be really, really in a great spot. Yeah, I don't mind XFC starting point. It's not that bad. So, okay, cool. Nick's environment, I just needed a reboot. Um, I think it was just QI, wasn't it? Or was it just Q? A QI, I think, is actually pulling everything from the internet. I can't remember the list installed. Yeah, that's what QI did. Oops, my bad. Oh, Q. Okay. List installed. So if we just do Nix environment dash Q, you can see we have Brave. And if we hit our start menu, we just tape Brave. Nice. Okay. Brave does work. Nice. So now let's go into our get our get our good stuff that we do need from Ubuntu Titus. Oh boy. We're not going to need any of this. And I think we can do like a substitute of Nala with DNF. Let's just see what that does. looking at this I don't think we'll need this either it's gonna have a lot of errors but should get us most of the way there okay We have a lot to track down, though. So let's get 
um, Faye and BSPWM first. TLDR, Nix environment. And we're just going to go Nix, EMV, Q, A, BSPWM. It's there. All right. Oh, man. Will this work? I mean, it might. We might be able to grab all the packages we need and then just host them all in, in Nix. QML module, do we need that? Let's, I don't know if we're going to be able to grab all of it. That'd be kind of insane, right? But kind of amazing as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not going to need that, I don't think, because it should be able to grab any dependencies. So really, we just got to focus on the main packages because Nick's... I think the next package manager can just figure out what dependencies it needs and just create the store for it. That's going to be wild. Absolutely bonkers this setup is. So then we get Faye and the next one. This is going to be what sets the background. And I believe this should be there. It is. So then we just go Faye. I think honestly, we can just go right through these. I think Nix is going to have all the big packages. So we're not going to have to uh, flip through and, and do a bunch of shenanigans uh let's just cat install and we'll just go through line by line so we'll get sdh this is for hotkeys can we build that'd be kind of wild if we could just build everything just grab the packages we need that this is why people use arches for all these packages but if you can use these packages on an older distribution and they're quarantined off in like a little Nix store, I mean, I mean, that would be the best of both worlds, would it not? Rofi, Polybar, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rofi. Thanks so much for the prime there, Medici. We're going to go Rofi, then Polybar. Oh, God. I think this is going to be amazing. PyCom we're going to need. Dude, okay. We already have Funar. Nitrogen we don't even need. Uh, LX pull kit. Oh, I don't know. You can't use a policy kit through Nix. I don't believe we could probably swap out LX pull kit to a different pull kit. So we, we will need to modify the theme because of the pull kit change. We already have that unzip, which DNF install. We should have unzip, wget, pulse, audio, pavu, control. Those all should be in the, the base repos. If I can do my password. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Pulse Audio, we're using Pipewire Pulse Audio, so that's even better. 
That's how old this project is. Okay, great. So then let's go to the next one, which is mainly flame shot and that. So if we go pseudo, so we have all these dependencies already. We just need to fix our pull kit. Remember that. And then we just need to grab these, which I can tell you right now, a couple of them like JQ, I don't think is needed. That's more of a dependency. Bam. Mango HUD's not going to be there. PS miscellaneous. I'm not sure. Flame shot, Neo fetch. What do we have? So JQ, PS Miss, and NeoFetch are all there. So JQ is not needed. SDDM is not going to be needed either. Uh, Papyrus, was that was that there? I don't see Papyrus. Yeah, but I think the big thing is we are on 5.14. Let's check our Linux kernel now that you mentioned it, chat. Because that's going to be needed. LX appearance, we already have, apparently. PA miss, we've got. And then NeoFetch, we got. So all this should fail. Unable to find a match. Flame shot, Mango Hut. Yeah, perfect. So these are our five ones we need to track down. And I think all that should just be in Nix. So we can just sub out that flame shot. Flame shot. Grab flame shot. Then mango HUD. I mean, we don't really need mango HUD. It would just be kind of a nice to have. I don't know how this is. I don't know how the gaming is going to be on here. This is going to be... <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I just, yeah, I don't know what to expect. Uh, Papyrus icon theme. Let's take a look at our LX appearance real fast. Just do a run. LX appearance. Did I spell appearance wrong? What's going on here? Let's just go into settings and see. Oh, did I not? Hmm. Crap. Oh, okay, there it is. Nordic Darker, Icons. It doesn't have our papyrus icon theme. Let's see if it can install. I mean, that's we're starting to get kind of wild with. Why am I on Helvetica? Weird. Okay. It's like what? That's crazy. Uh. So this is just the appearance tab. Uh, let's see if we can't get that. I don't think you can because this icon theme is going to be system wide, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we. Sh yeah, I think you can do this space. I'm just doing it one at a time, lab. Yeah. So we have that. So we got flame shot, mango HUD. I'm going to grab this papyrus icon theme. I want to look up and see what we have for papyrus. I think we probably need to manually install that though. So let's do a Nix EMV and then we're going to do a QA papyrus. But once we're done with it, it should just be there. Oh, it's there. Dang. Dude, I am so impressed with Nix's package manager. So impressed. 
papyrus icon theme. How's it going to read that from the Nick store? Magic, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, I was like, I don't know how that's going to work exactly. I mean, it's in their package manager, but yeah, you're going to have to... We'll, we'll manually grab that. It's not It's not the end of the world. It's just an icon theme. But we'll, we'll have to grab that manually. All right. And then fonts, noto color emoji. This is something I would imagine. Let's just grab variety and dunce real fast. And we'll do it uh, the method you, you mentioned in chat. Nix, EMB, IA, Nix, packages, and then dunced. And then the other one, Nix, packages. What was the other one? Variety. Variety is not really needed. But we can grab it. All right, so those are done. We just have the emojis and... And that should be pretty good. We do need to grab... Now that I'm thinking about it, we do need to grab a couple special fonts. Fonts, color, emoji. Man. You would think that they'd have something. Let's just look at the fonts. And then let's grab emoji and see what they have. Oh, so it's there. It's just name different. Look at that. You just want the color fonts. It's Google dash Noto dash emoji color fonts. Nice. Um, and that's in app stream. And then I want to just check. Let's do icon. Grep papyrus. And that's there too. Papyrus icon theme. So I guess I didn't type it oh maybe it was like themes or something it's there it's in the epel repo yeah i mean so i remember trying to do this type of install a couple years back without nix and the problem is you run into a lot of packages that you're like crap i need that package and you can't grab it but with nix we can grab, you can almost mix and match from the regular system stuff to some, some stuff obviously doesn't work in Nix, like system stuff that's needs to be read on boot or something like that. But most of the, but I mean, hell the window manager, that's, that's a pretty integral part of what you're doing on the system. So we'll see how that works exactly. How am I going to launch into that? And is it going to even read it from GDM? Things I do not know, but we have almost all of them now in. So we should have almost all of my base fonts, and it should look somewhat okay. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see, close window. Uh, so let's just do a log out. Let's log out. Yeah, we could also symlink that too. Yeah, you're, you're right. But lower right hand corner, we have XFCE session, standard X11 display server. What does that give me when I do standard X11? Oh, that's, uh, that's just GNOME. Yeah, it's an interesting, this is was a flavor of Gnome I was looking at. Uh, man, that does look nice, though, I will say. Ooh. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, that looks all right. Huh. 
I mean, I don't, I don't know if I, I mean, I kind of like it. Um, it doesn't launch into Brave. Brave browser, maybe? Okay, no, that, that did not work. So it doesn't really pull in my stuff that well, but I mean, it's not, it's not awful. Yeah, I guess that works. Can I push that? Yeah, we can push it. I mean, mm. let's just see. Let's see. Um, let's, uh, what if we do BSPWM? Another window manager is already running. So maybe we switch GDM to just push into BSPWM. Uh, if we do a locate, is locate even locate BSPWM? Uh, locate. Can't remember locate syntax. Uh, TLDR. Let's do an update, I guess. And then TLDR locate. And I want to say sudo update DB. That's it. This should be able to grab all those certain, create an index database for us. Yeah, this is, this is going to be kind of interesting. So we're going to do locate brave. Okay. Well, that, that, that's not exactly what I was looking for. Uh, locate. BSPWM. So it's in this next store right here. It's in the bin file over here. Okay. What if we do kind of like a sim link, but there's a way to specify the sessions that the Linux sees. So we could just, I think it's user sessions. So if we go USR and maybe it's share sessions, X sessions. Yeah. Let's go to X sessions. Uh, let's copy or let's just switch to super user. And what we're going to do is let's just copy XFCE. We're going to just, oh, uh, to BSPWM desktop. Okay. Vim BSPWM desktop. Um, just grab, uh, Just, you're just going to minimize this a little bit. Okay. So we'll go call this one BSPWM session. Something like that, right? Kind of like this. Uh, I I forgot I even did this. This is this is how long I've had it. I was actually on GNOME at some point in time, and it just had some configuration sitting in my thing, and this is what I ended up landing on. Anyways, log out.
So we'll grab this, switch this. We now have BSPWM session. And if we log in, do we get a BSPM window manager? All right, all right. Go a little bit different here. There's some things I want to switch around here, but all in all, we should have, okay. Okay, okay. It's almost set up right. Couple problems. I have zero start menu. Does Rofi just not work? Failed to set locale. What could cause that? Hmm, interesting. So we need kind of need a start menu, I suppose. Uh we're not able to launch Brave. Except through that method. Okay. So let's fix our hotkeys, I suppose. I mean, I'm I, as much as this stream started out as just a complete hot mess, where it's ending up is kind of where I want to be. I'm kind of digging it. Okay. So we just got a row fee set locale. So let's say I push this to do stuff to launch into Brave browser, but I couldn't launch into Brave browser because let's reload. Then launch into Brave. No, no, still not liking it. Um, did I forget my hotkey to reload? It is super alt Q. Okay. So super alt reload. Okay. Launch brave for me. Hmm. Work in progress. Work in progress. Uh, go launch into the start me. Oh, son of a, okay. Nothing. Oh, shoot. Okay. All right. We still have a lot to fix. Nothing's working. Up on the start menu or the poly bar. But it's there. And the workspaces do work. Hmm. Yeah, so it's Rocky Linux Polybar BSPWM using Nix Package Manager. Solid. Solid. I think I am just for stability purposes if I can make this work. Because then I don't have to worry about updates or anything because these packages are going to be ancient. And I don't have to worry about like the underlying system ever getting messed up. Because we're using Rocky Linux 9.1. I really like it. I really like it. Okay, so we just got to keep pushing. We've got to keep pushing forward on it. Yeah, this is definitely this is definitely up there in the custom distro territory. This is a unique, unique bird we got going. Very unique. So. We're reloading this. What is that reload doing? It's just doing a quit of the window manager and relaunching. Um. Super cues, close and quit. That's fine. How's a, our, okay, that's working really well, actually. 
theming works really well. Very smooth, though. I will say uh, almost zero lag. I mean, we don't really have anything running except for these Nix packages that's giving us the interface. Yeah, the kernel's ancient. What are we, what are we rocking again? I think it's 5.14. Let's see. Yeah, 5.14. Again, this is supposed to be the most stable. So... Can we do a DKG kernel install? Yeah, you know. We're starting. To, yeah. TKG does make some of the best kernels. All right. All right. Let's just see. Um, Do I have... Ch oh, God bless. I need to fix Rofi. All right. One second. I'll be right back. I gotta get something. I had to step away for a second. All right, all right, all right. Had to get some protein powder and yogurt. Mmm, delicious. Well, kind of. Probably should have mixed that in there. Dang it. Epic fail. All right, what'd I miss? Ah. Uh, Rocky does not sound stable. Yeah, it's about as stable as you can get for a distribution. There's not much else out there that's more stable, but we're talking servers. But although, I don't know. I think this this whole creation we've done so far today has been um, really wild. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't really quite envision it to go this, this direction, but... I'm not not upset at all. I think this might actually work really well. Sorry if uh, I was trying to mix this in. This is getting a little messy, but an Adrian package manager. <laughs> uh -huh. Why are you so re reluctant to try NixOS? More so that this is just my main system that I'm on. I don't know NixOS, and it'd be, require a lot of... Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm reluctant to try it. It's just I don't want things not to work for me. And the big thing is uh, DaVinci Resolve was the whole reason for doing this today. I just want to I just want to freaking be on DaVinci Resolve. So once we get Rofi set up so we have a start menu... We have Brave, so we have a web browser, and all that set up properly. I feel like we're we're golden. Hyperland is a little bit out of reach as of yet on something this old. Hell, Hyperland's like pretty much out of reach on Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is much newer than this. Does it have its own DaVinci Resolve? Is that in the NixOS? Oh damn! If I knew that, I would have done NixOS. Is that a thing? No, really? Ah, for now, we're just going to have to cheese this. Cheese it up. All right, let's go NixOS. Get out of here. What? Oh, I should have done Nix. I didn't even see this, guys. Oh, man. I did not even see this. You can just Nix install. Oh, well. That, I thought you were kidding. I thought you were just messing with me. What? I'm not reinstalling. <laughs> we're so close. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm. 
Not yet, at least. Next week's a new week. <laughs> That's the one thing you can always count on me. Things never get too boring. <laughs> as much as I change. Um, okay, okay. Let me just push you over. Let's push you back to here. All right. Let's fix Rofi. So when we try to do Rofi, failed to set locale. So Rofi failed to set locale. What is that? Oh, there was a locale generation problem. Oh, I made a gist back in the day that's just awful, but it works. And if you ever have locale problems, just run this little gist. Where's my gist? One second. Uh, gist.github.com forward slash Chris Titus Tech. Uh, da, 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 da. What were you? Did I scroll past it? What? Older? How long? How old was this? Oh, here it was. Fixed locale. Bam. So what we're going to do is just force it through using this. So what we're doing is pushing this to etc environment, this one to ecc.gen, this one to etc conf, and then you lo local uh, generate it. So if we do wget bam, and then just do sudo fix locale. Oh, what? Fix? Grab fix. I uh, probably probably just need a ch mod that. Suso. Locale gin. Locale CTL, maybe? It all looks right, though. So if you do Rofi... That's just a warning, though. It should actually... should actually launch it, right? Hmm... <laughs> distros don't matter distro hopping is bad hey distro hopping can teach you stuff but it just depends let's uh let's auto log in now that we got our now that we got our base environment set up let's do this Um, we have that, we have that, we have that. Oh, what is it? <laughs> I'm having a problem thinking of the locale. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Auto login GDM. Give me Arch Linux. Arch Linux wiki any day of the week. You just can't go wrong with it. It's always like, here's what you need. This will get you by. Ah, uh, let's see. So this is the auto login under Damon.
You can set the session used for auto login, replace gnome dash XOR with X session equals perfect. Okay. The desired session and that's interesting. Let's see if the, this exists on Rocky. I think it I think it should. So pseudo vim. Okay. Yeah, okay, that that does look good. So yeah, I guess no GDM. It's been a while since I've done GDM. So yeah, never mind. It just sets it like that. Then we just gotta put this in the daemon section of the custom.com. So pseudo vim etc gdm custom.com under daemon. We just toss this guy in. Come to the end. Titus. Save that out, reboot, and we'll see what happens. Nope, nope. We are... We are going to... What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to Rocky Linux. That's that's it. Essentially, it's Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Workstation. Titus, Titusified. <laughs> oh man, I remember Rocco. He interviewed me once. Whatever happened to Rocco? I know he, he stopped doing um, Big Daddy Linux. He was awesome. I loved him. He was a, just a good dude all around. All right, that is working. Our hotkeys are working. Do we have Rofi? Rofi is still no good. So what is happening with Rofi? Rofi fails to launch and the polybar is not responsive. Why is that? So the reason why I think this is the most stable is because Red Hat Enterprise Linux is used in a lot of environments. And typically, if I'm going to stand up a server that's going to run for 10 years, I'm going to choose a Red Hat Enterprise Linux server. Not Fedora, not, you know, some other spin, not a Debian, not uh, Arch or any of that. I would choose a Red Hat Enterprise spin usually it was CentOS back in the day CentOS 6 and CentOS 7 and then when Red Hat essentially killed CentOS uh, and the creator of CentOS when he got bought out by Red Hat he created this Rocky Linux and it's basically the same thing CentOS was so that's why Rocky Linux is a thing and that's why I'd call it probably the most stable distribution in existence because it has support. It's end of life is in 2032. It's literally 10 years from now. So we have our browser hotkeys fixed. Now it's just Rofi that we got to get going. Rofi fails to launch. I also think there's some issues with Polybar up here. Like we have some responsiveness, but like the start menu is not working. We do have some, some issues. Let's look at Polybar. What is happening here? So let's do a launch. Whenever I'm troubleshooting uh, Polybar, I like to relaunch it and just kind of see, hey, what, what are errors do I have? Because then when you're clicking on stuff, 
it can kind of give you a little bit real-time feedback. Uh, but it's not actually doing that. We are running into loading module pulse audio, probably pulse wire or pipe wire, I should say. We could also switch out from polybar. What if we took ooh? Oh man, I really want to choose pain today if I choose ooh. Oh man, but that was pretty cool with the Hyperland interface with Ooh. We could redesign that same deal. I'm not sold on, I've never been a huge Polybar fan. It is really easy to configure, but Ooh does make some really cool ones. Um, Maybe when we do Rofi, it doesn't give me any feedback on Rofi why that's not launching. Do we have anything? I don't think, we, yeah, there's not going to be anything in the official repos. Oh, this is just profiling library. Um, What other launchers could we use? Ooh. Um, I think Ooh does Xorg. Nope. <laughs> That's not going to give me what I need. Ooh Linux, please. So you get this. I mean, that's kind of neat. You got so much different things you can do with ooh. It's just kind of a pain to work with is why most people don't don't go with it. But I mean, you get some of the most beautiful aesthetics. Oh man, I think we got to go for it. All right, all right, let's go. Let's do it. Mm. We're gonna nix it, nix it. We're moving, we're moving forward again. We're gonna create the best, most stable, most awesomest distribution in the whole wide world. Ew, yeah. So there's ew, Wayland, and then just regular ew. Oh boy. I'm already regretting this and I haven't even installed it yet. <laughs> oh boy. This is going to be cool though. So I like this. Let's just grab the uh, widgets. Let's just grab the zip. I'm just going to grab a little bit of this. Uh, file roller should be in here. I don't know why I don't have file roller. All right, let's just extract that. We have a, should we install DaVinci Resolve too? Actually, uh, let's, let's get our, while we're here. Ooh, we also need to grab all of our NFS shares too. Oh, geez, all right. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. The resolve. Let's let's get resolve going, and then we'll get ooh. We'll fix that. We'll fix that. We still don't have a start menu, but start menus are overrated. But I would like a start menu. 
<laughs> they are they are a bit official to some extent. Um, do I have FS tab? Um, let's just go pseudo vim etc fs tab. All right, let's just retrieve cat home titus backups fs tab. All right, we got that. Just to get that, we'll put this as network drives, images, main pool, drive, FCP. Let's go to media. Let's go sudo make directory images, drive, main pool, FCP. And then what we're going to do is a sudo ch own Titus colon star. Do a listing, Titus owns everything, sudo mint a bad file system because we do not have NFS tools or utils probably. Grab our NFS tools, try it again. And after a short time, this should show the prompt and we should have all of our network shares. You working back there, computer? Come on. All right. Thank you. And when we pull this up, we now have all of our good stuff. Uh, oh, can I try? Yeah, we can try that. I agree. Uh, Yusuf, let's go uh, sudo locale ctl set locale. Uh, bah, 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 bah. what is the locale? I think let's just try locale. And then we can set the locale to in underscore us dot utf dash eight. Bam. Pseudo locale. Everything looks gravy. Rofi. Failed to set locale. Yeah, it's something else. Use your guide. Yeah, I, I already I already ran that a little bit earlier, Omar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my L cars themed Lynx desktop. Not really that practical because there's a ton of wasted space on the screen, but damn is it fun. L cars is fun. I even made an image for people, or if you're on like Christize.com as a member, you can get it. Uh, go to ctdstore.com. I think a, the image is five bucks, but you can build this yourself. I should have a walkthrough video on all of this. I think I redid it as OVA as well, so you can put it on pretty much anything. Um, I should have a guide, though, so you can just do it yourself. Yeah. This is the, the guide. So you want to do a base Debian 10 buster distribution, install these dependencies, and then I created a script so it'll just do it all for you. And then you might set up and change and tweak some of the initial configuration. And then you end up with uh, that kind of desktop. So if you're interested in L cars, man, love it. It was a, that was a fun little project to do. And I, it's not like I created it. It's just I found it on the net. And I was like, oh, dude, this looks amazing. And then I just kind of made it easier for folks. Okay. So. Why is not that not working? Rofi.
there's Rofi unwrapped. And then there's also just regular Rofi. Let's do a query of our Nyx real fast. Okay. Yeah, like we can try this. See, we can do a little quick export. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that that worked. Oh, so the C for is that colite? Okay, so ah, uh, okay. Now I gotta redo my script here. Um, that fixed it. Genius. Uh, pseudo vim. I don't know. Let's just go vim. Fix locale. Locale gin lang okay. That's fine. So really it's just switching that in the ETC environment. So instead of doing this, we will just do a C. Write that out. Okay, that's good. So that does fix our Rofi. So then if we go Rofi. All right, well, let's reboot, and then it should fix it. <sighs> oh, geez, I got to fix that, too. And then we got to figure out what's going on with our power. Oh, wait, no. Rofi's driven, driving the power menu, too. So this will fix two birds with one stone. Oh, thanks, Yusuf. That, that seemed to work. So this should auto log us in, drop us on the desktop, and we should have a functional start menu. All the bases are there, and then we can start working on pimping it out a little bit. Yes! Oh, got it. Beautiful. So anybody can rice an arch thing, but the true chads do it in Rocky Linux. <laughs> Yeah, all right, cool. We're we're we are cooking with gas. I bet our start menu works too. Does that work? Our power menu is still broken. That's okay. We'll fix that. Um Oh, that's so awesome. And I think we might switch that top bar to something a little bit cleaner like this right here. But for now, we have we have this going. Next steps. <laughs> Rice KDE Plasma on LFS. Well, it's just KDE though. Yeah. I I give you I give you five points. <laughs> five points for Gryffindor. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what we can do here. I feel like we're on the precipice of a new desktop. A new era. Okay. So what's happening with power menu? I think we switch to ooh and see what we get.
Yes. I think that's what we do. So we already have, you know what, from the Hyperland config, we do already have a bunch of stuff in OO. Do we like that? We could start making like some kind of weird Frankenstein contraption here. I mean, we already have it. This is this guy's dot files. He's an ST kitty. Shell's going to be MKSH or dash. Editor NeoVim. Interesting. Hmm. I think we go for it with this guy's profile. What all does he have? What is he doing with his EATC comp? Oh, that's just the backlight. Uh, what's he doing with his monitors? Uh, he's got 1080p and then, a, ooh, God bless. An external display at 768. This poor, poor man. Ouch. That's painful. And then you got your touchpad. So he's doing this on a laptop with an external display. I kill myself. Eesh. That's rough. All right. Dot local. What fonts are we using? Feather, fire code, nerd font, material. Oof. All right. Nothing bad. What kind of bins he doing? Music, music term, screenshot. What I bet that's a script of some sort. Notify send. He's using Dunst, and then he is using something called Mame. I don't know what Mame is. I do understand he's doing X Clip. So if we look at this, do we have X Clip? I think we have X Clip already, but just to double check. No, we don't have X Clip. Gonna need X Clip for sure. Um, oh, XDO tool as well. I miss XDO tool. When I moved to Wayland, I missed the hell out of it. Love me some. Oh, no XDO tool. Oh. Oopsies. Forgot the whole DNF install. <laughs> set up yes i totally given the distro name set up a custom sound and be like adrian <laughs> oh yeah that would be beautiful that would be beautiful yeah we're not going to use these scripts either set bg he's using fey that's solid um workspace He's BSPWM. Nice. Not really needed there, but so be it. Um, yeah. 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 What's up, bud? Oh uh, yeah, I got it right here. Can you take my bowl in? Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Is that it? Yeah. That was it. Okay. Yeah, thanks, man. You're welcome. Um, 
I think mom's not feeling well. She... Oh no, she laying down. Yeah. Okay. Rut row. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She sure got shared the joy. Yep, she got us all sick except you. Uh, hurting a little bit, but I think it's because I'm warm. Oh okay. Yeah, my daughter just got sick. Got us all sick, man. All right. GitHub.conf. Okay, so the .conf is really the only thing we need out of here. And out of all these, I think it's just really his ooh that I want. I don't even know where I found this at. Naraj998. I just randomly popped up in my feed and I was like, ooh, I like it. It's very clean looking. So that's his Rofi. So we're probably going to need to grab his Rofi too, I would imagine. Does it show that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the Rofi I already have kind of matches that theming a bit. I think we can mix and match. Well, let's just grab some dot files. So... We're in a bit uncharted territory here, but it, I got to tell you, it is feeling really nice. Um, and then let's, let's install our, I think I got them over here, actually. Let's just grab, I forgot we're doing DaVinci Resolve. That was the whole purpose of this. Uh, download DaVinci Resolve. Oh, wait, no, I already got DaVinci Resolve. I need uh, AMD drivers. We're going to get and download the AMD drivers specifically for this. So we're going to see the drivers. We're going to go rel. Uh, we're going to 9.1 right here. There's that. Let's launch into our downloads. And then sudo... Uh, RPM install, AMD, GPU, there we go, uh, looks like we have a mismatch signature, or did that install? Okay. It's going to grab all the rock M, AMD GPUs, all that stuff, and the DKMS. Noise. If you want DaVinci Resolve to work on an AMD GPU, you need to install rock M OpenCL and it will work. Uh, does this, I think this grabbed a rock M. OpenCL. Let's take a peek. We'll do a listing of what's installed. We'll type Rock M and make sure we have OpenCL. I'm pretty sure it would grab it with these proprietary ones, but we'll we'll find out. I just see the Rock M LLVM right now. <laughs> yeah, man, I thought Nvidia drivers were bloated. Yeah, this is only a four gig download.
yeah, I know we'll have all the options with this this type of setup, so we can, can we can switch off of them. I haven't used the AMD closed source drivers in years. Pretty much ever since they became open source, I never really uh, went anywhere. Sparky, how you doing, man? We're on Rocky Linux today. I decided to decided to go completely off the off the rails and go just bonkers with my setup here. I have no idea what I'm doing on this, but I do feel like it's going to land us in a spot where even I can't break it. It did grab Rockim OpenCL, by the way. It's up here. 2.0. Yeah, I think uh, Wayland's getting close to taking over, uh, but X11 still the, got the lion's share. Yeah. Is the end product going to be reproducible? I maybe. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, Ashlyn. It's kind of like uh, I learn a little bit each time I do these kind of redesigns. I know it feels like I'm just kind of like all over the place, but uh, they're, they're really, really kind of amazing. Like I always think of something or figure out a, like a new way of doing something. So we have that, and now I think we'll do a reboot, and then, oh wait, I still got to fix my start menu. That's right, we're going to switch to OO anyway, so uh, we're just going to do it through CLI for now. Okay, so new drivers are in. So now let's go into our downloads, do some DaVinci Resolve, right? Do I need to do this as sudo? Oh, wait, do we even have a poll kit running? One second. Uh, PS Aux grep poll. Does say there's a pull kit going. Um, pull kit D, but I don't think that's quite what we. I think we need to run an actual pull kit. If we do a ls user lib, and then go pull kit. Don't we need to run the agent helper along with it, or? Uh, what pull kits? We do need to grab a pull kit. That's right. We're going to have a heck of a time uh, elevating graphic. Because if you don't have a pull kit installed, your graphic applications can't elevate to root or super user. Real secure, but <laughs> kind of a bummer uh, for a lot of stuff. <coughs> so, pull kit. Let's just type pull kit arch. All right. What do we have? USR bin. I feel like I want to switch over. There's XFCE pull kit now. Or we could just do pull, uh, pull kit gnome. I feel like pull kit gnome will give us the best result here. Uh, let's see what that does. Pull kit gnome. Does that exist? It does. Just because it's a rocky, is usually has pull kit gnome. 
So then if we look at that, we should have our authentication agent sitting in user lib pull kit. No. So if we go ls user lib pull kit gnome pull kit pull kit gnome. I just see poke it. Huh. Uh, pull kit gnome authentication agent one. Let's see if we can't do a locate on this. Let's update our database and see that. So let's just do update DB sudo and then once this updates we're going to do a locate of pull kit gnome agent okay i didn't see that so this is where it is on rocky a little bit different area from debian or arch linux but there it is So let's go into r.config cd into bspwm so we have pull kit right here and what we need it to be oh poop Come on. We need it to be this. All righty. That looks like uh, exactly what we need. What's happening? Oh. Let's just yank this. Let's paste it in. Ampersand. So now if we just do like G parted we should get a prompt or not. Oh, ah, my bad. So when I launched this before, you don't do it as sudo. Ah, okay. Wow, I'm such a goob. So it should be that. Then when you launch G parted. Yeah. All right, great. Now we can install DaVinci Resolve and it should self elevate. DaVinci Resolve run. <sighs> okay. Okay. That is odd. Let's see if it actually grabs these dependencies. Remember when we ran into this on Fedora, it was just a nightmare. But DaVinci Resolve says it's tested for this. All right. Like, why is their install script suck so bad from DaVinci? <laughs> it's like amazing how badly this runs. <sighs> Luckily, they do have amazing, amazing software. All right, there's our elevation prompt.
but does it run? Dude, if this didn't run, I would literally just punch my computer right now. The whole reason for doing it this way was for DaVinci Resolve to work flawlessly. Okay. That looks good. All right. Da Vinci Resolve. All right. That looks pretty good. I dig it. Let's grab something from, oh, let's go preferences. Let's add some storage locations. We're going to need something from, oh, I don't even have anything there. A little bit, a little bit wacky navigating this, but not, not awful. So date modify. What what's the latest cut start? Okay. Choose. Save. Okay. Now this is NFS, and I think that might if we look at direct IO, let's pull in a little project and see how it scrubs. I think I might need to change a couple things here, but Let's just grab like uh, this stream here. Okay, we got some. It's not able to scrub it. Hmm. Oh, if it's not one thing, it's the next, man. Yeah. Yeah, a whole Discord thing. Yeah. It it blew up and I I published the Discord on YouTube and had a whole bunch of people join and we got up to like a couple thousand members or something and it was just unwieldy and it got to be like a bunch of drama and stuff and I was like, "No." So this time around I'm just kind of like Twitch chat and just a few people that uh can find the Discord make it more of a tight-knit group and not not so not so wild. Wild Westy. Um, so this sucks. Why doesn't this work? Let's look at those project managers. Actually, let's go DaVinci preferences again. Let's try direct IO. Does that give me anything? I mean, NFS should be pretty much direct IO. It's not really, but should at least I got 10 gig connection. Hmm. We might need a reboot. We'll see. Let's uh let's reboot. It's close. It's close to working. <laughs> yeah, who who would have ever thunk it? Drama on Discord. Oh uh, goodness. What's your opinion of the new ReFS? Are you thinking like riser file system? Didn't that guy go to prison for like murdering his wife? Oh yeah, yeah. I need to fix the power menu. All right, Da Vinci. All right, no clips in the media pool. Let's just say, uh, let's just import our media. We got these. Crack. 
Create a new timeline. Oh, it's not going to scrub it. Oh, come on. Let's see. We're probably missing missing a library or something. I'm I'm it's it's fine. Let's just grab celluloid and let's see what it can. Let's make sure we can play these files natively. Uh celluloid. Cell celluloid. Wait, wait, no. Celluloid. Celluloid. Why can't I spell celluloid all of a sudden? Oh my gosh. That's just what? Celluloid, right? <laughs> Happy birthday. It's not my birthday. <laughs> okay, yeah. CDs, DNF, search. Sell you. Celluloid's not in here. Oh, man. Have to pl flat pack it. We could probably just do it through Nix, like Nix environment QA celluloid. Nix would have it. It's not my birthday. Damn it, Jalopy. Stop trolling people. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, let's try celluloid like this. Hmm. Oh, we need Nix, Nix packages. <sighs> terrible, just terrible. All right, all right, come on. What do we got? Did these not mount? Let's go to the date modified. Let's go to here. See, these aren't even showing up. Hmm. What's the what's your guys' favorite media viewer? <sighs> y'all, y'all, you're just too much. Too much. No, we're not doing VLC. MPV, MPV, yeah, MPV's best. Yeah, thank you. Oh my. I bet you were just missing libraries, and that's why it's not reading that file. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so now we should be able to just go into like media, FCP, 2023. Let's just come down into here and then let's just do an MPV 2023. Yeah. There it is. AT manager, man. All right, sweet. So that's that. We got our MPV in there. That, now we can play it, I bet you DaVinci Resolve will work. Dude, if it doesn't. No, it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. Mm hmm. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. Oh, this sucks. Okay. Yeah, the problem with Nobara is it's based on Fedora. In like Fedora 38, nobody's gotten uh, DaVinci Resolve working in Fedora 38. I think, is Nobara still on 37? Because as soon as they update it to 38, it'll break it. Because all the dependencies changed and it just screws everything up. That's the whole reason we're doing this stable environment is because it just won't change. So it's just getting over the hump. It's just getting over the hump. Man, I just... Here's the, here's the issue. Here's the issue, chat, is when you're on the latest and greatest, it will update and it will break. I don't want that. I want an environment that updates like once a month, if that. If I don't want to update it that month, I just don't. It's fine. And that's why I'm on this. I don't want to be Jason the Dragon anymore. I just want a freaking stable environment. It's just setting it up. Setting it up is a much bigger pain on these older... This older uh, package, packages we choose from. Yeah. But this is working. It's just uh, let me let me just reboot. Let me just reboot real fast, and then let me think what. Yeah, yeah, Rocky will work probably fine. No, no, Rocky's KDE is kind of blue. That's right. We started the stream in Rocky's Rocky Linux KDE 9.1, and it was hot garbage. So never mind. I can't recommend it. Yeah, we were just like, ah, uh, yeah, this isn't working, so let's just throw everything away. And then we ended up basically uninstalling like a thousand something packages, and then starting over on XFCE and then moving to BSPWM and like a Nix environment. But it's still, it's still at its core, very stable. Yeah, XFC is very stable and there's not very many moving parts. So yeah, I think a Rocky Linux with XFCE is really great for someone that really wants a great stable environment. But yeah, Let's go DaVinci Resolve. I think it just might might not play my MOV file. I don't know. So let's let's just see. Oh no, it's not playing anything, man. Hmm. Yeah. It needs MOV file that is either ProRes or... Yeah, so MOVs are great because I, I, I like MOVs instead of like MP4... 
because uh, when I do the import here, uh, specifically like a lot of the newer clips, I have separate audio tracks from these streams. So I'm recording right now as I'm streaming. And then let's say I need to make a bunch of like J and L cuts. Well, if I have a backing track like you're hearing right now, Well, that's going to mess up. As soon as I do a cut, it'll be like over here, and then all of a sudden I'll be over here, and it's going to just look awful. So I need to be able to strip out those tracks and separate all my audio into different layers, and then when I go to the recording, it's fine. If I was just exporting this whole stream afterwards, then that's cool. I don't have to do anything, but I'm going to inevitably need to chop it up for YouTube because it just doesn't work on YouTube as a full full video. <sighs> oh no. Yeah. So that's that's the whole reason for doing it doing it like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. I can get this. Let's just see what the Because this is an MP4 file. It should at least be able to pull in like this little baby timeline here. Let's just create a timeline with this. This is a, a 60 second short, so there should be zero rendering. And it's just a little tiny file. But we're not getting anything. Why is that? And the answer to that is I don't know. Black screen Linux. Oh, pre and studio versions don't support AAC audio on Linux. Dude. Oh, DaVinci Resolve works like shit. It is literally just hit install and play in Windows, and then you just drag and drop the files. Like, what the hell? The Resolve needs to get their shit together. <laughs> Just say you don't support Linux. I think that's the best best thing they could just do. I would just drop it if I were them because it's just maddening. Oh. Well, that's, that's just it. The whole reason for choosing Rocky is this is a supported distribution. It's it's RHEL. It, it should be the most supported Linux distribution for DaVinci out of the box. And even, even now I'm running into problems. And I'm like, what the hell? Come on. I don't understand why this is so problematic. No, I'm ditching Mac. So, if I'm reading this right, chat, here's here's what I'm seeing from DaVinci Resolve. It can't do any H.264 decoding on CentOS or RHEL, like we're using. But it can on Windows? in the free version, but if you do the studio version, it does work. I mean, I'll buy the studio version if that's the case. Let's see what this is. Um, God bless. Okay. 
codec yes uh mov format is there uh h264 yes for the decode yes on windows 10 let's go to this one and you got prores apple yes h264 studio only gpu accelerated on nvidia cards studio and nvidia cards <sighs> well that doesn't make any sense i guess i mean that's totally so it's studio only like look at this Yeah, so, hmm. For editing, I strongly advise against using H.264 and H.265. It gives more advanced editors nothing but headaches. So, I could switch over the recording. Ah. <sighs> So to do that, I probably would go to a ProRes. So like an Apple ProRes, MOV, probably like probably do something like that would be the best option, I would imagine. Because I know I think that option's in OBS, if I'm if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah, Omer, stop spamming chat, man. I got it. You can transcode it, but transcoding is just a waste of my time. Yeah, so, like, when you transcode stuff, it, uh... It's just an extra step, and it's extra time out of the day. It's just... No. <laughs> That's not a solution. It, it, it's, it's fine for, you know, something like a one or two off, but if I'm going to do this seven times a week dude that's just not a solution you just you're adding extra steps just boot into windows at that point that's a hell of a lot easier as a step than uh doing any of this other stuff oh if you record ProRes straight from obs the size would be extreme i would recommend normal mp4 and then transcode it with stutter encoder to keep the quality you have in a decent file size yeah. I mean, you can do ProRes at a decent bit rate, Kaiser. I want to say you might even be able to get around like 8,000, yeah, probably about 12,000 on the bit rate on a ProRes 422 probably. And I think you could get it done and only be... I would say a stream, let's say we did a three or four hour stream. I think we could get that under a couple hundred gigs. So probably like, uh, I mean, I don't know what your idea of extreme is, but I think a couple hundred gigs is pretty doable. I have 120 terabytes, so I, I would be okay with that raw size. Or we could just buy Studio and switch to an NVIDIA card. So that's an option. <laughs> if we want to go that route, we could do it. I mean, at this point, we're using, we're using uh, proprietary drivers on AMD anyways. So, yeah. I think that's possible. 
think it is. But as I think uh, Kaiser was saying, uh, using uh, most pro editors don't like H.264 or H.265. They would much rather have like an MP, um, an MP4, and then transcode it over over to ProRes. I mean, I guess to just to see if it works. You know what we should do? Well, first off, let's DNF search. Chatterino. I think there's a Chatterino too, and no, nah, that was Fedora. All right. Man, that was just such a bummer, man. All that just to find out all my file file formats are incompatible. I'll do some I'll do some tests and uh figure that out though. Hmm. One second. I'm just gonna add my account again. Do, do, do. All right. Close. I don't know how this is working, but it just like auto logged in for me. So we're going to go with that. Uh, Omar, uh, this is just the stream beats I always use. Take it easy, Sparky. Thanks for popping in. Yeah, magically auto logged in. Ah, I saved a token in there somewhere, so we got that going for us. Um, We could use Omar. We you know, let's try it. I guess we could try and do the whole transcoded stuff just to see just to see it work. I think long term we just change from that though. So we take our transcoding like this and then switch it over. An FFmpeg. Do we have FFmpeg? Um, Synthwave is uh, the one I use. Yeah, let's try Omar's little transcode just to make sure this works. Let's just go into here. What we're going to do, we're going to actually come into like a little short here. Oh, I need to get rid of XFCE terminal, so that's not the default. Um, So what we're going to do is just transcode this quick little uh, short, which doesn't matter. Like, it's only only a little bit. And then I want to try and grab this footage MPEG and see if it reads it again in, in Resolve. Just to make sure that this is the problem. So I hate to go do something drastic like buy an NVIDIA card and purchase Studio and all this other stuff just to have it not work. That would be just a giant sad face. Yeah, 
You know, I will say say this much about Twitch, but I got to say the Twitch ads are at least better than the YouTube ads. I, I forget what stream it was. We were pulling up the YouTube ad and my goodness, it was like a mobile game and this guy was doing something that looked like uh, not appropriate for anybody. And uh, yeah, it was wild. It was just wild. I was just like, what, how are they taking money on this? This is just downright wrong. It was like on a, I think we were watching like a Microsoft video too. And it that popped up and I was like, oh, yikes. Okay. Let's see what we got. Um, so we have that, uh, you know, let's try to open it directly from resolve. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, what would happen on that? Let's just go here, TLDR, open with resolve. Let's see if it can. Yeah, I don't think it's going to do it. All right. Worth a shot. Uh, Ashlyn, I'm not sure, man. I'm, I'm kind of losing faith in old resolve here. It is just... Oh, geez. It is just full of bugs. Very, very buggy is what I would say. Are we still having problems here? It's really close. I, I Yeah, I think once we get it working, though, it'll be fine. It, it'll be worth it once we're done with all this. That's the thing. It'll be fine once we get, get all the way through. Um, I don't know why that's causing me problems, but let's just, uh, it, like resolve just ran off on me. So I don't know what's going on here. Let's just term it sig term. All right. All right. Now let's try resolve launch for me. Resolve. Oh goodness. All right. So this one doesn't work because of that, but having said that, I think we can just go to our media pool and we can grab, I think it was uh, this one, TLDR. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, guys. So that does work. It's a little laggy. Ah, uh, super laggy. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think you have to go with an NVIDIA card if you really even want to bother with a DaVinci Resolve on Linux. Yeah, audio is way out of sync. <laughs> oh, gosh. And this is just a 60 second clip, too. Let's do proxies, I guess. Let's just uh, timeline proxy. Uh, let's go smart on the user cache. Oh, gosh. Oh. 
I'm having I'm having I'm having difficulties coping. I really am. I really am having difficulties coping with this. This just sucks really bad. And it has like everything that's said to do. We we uh, even transcoded a little short clip into exactly the formats they want. And this is what we get. Does that direct IO have anything to do with it? We can try it off. It's on in Windows, though. By comparison. Let's go ahead and make proxy clips, too. Let's just do that. So we took direct IO off. We have this. Proxy clip should automatically be generated no matter what. Let's just give it every chance to possibly succeed here. Let's just go render cache. Usually I do smart though. I mean, we could knock it down to a quarter resolution. That is so laggy. All right, let's just go quarter resolution on the playback resolution. Quarter. Let's go full. Damn. This just sucks. Nope. It is stable, though. <laughs> Oh, so NVIDIA only on Linux. Well. Let's start looking at NVIDIA cards. And then I'll just buy the studio, too. That's definitely it, though. It's just there's so much render lag. Uh, Yeah. Nvidia is definitely better in this res this this case because Resolve just did not do anything to optimize for AMD. Yeah. All right. Uh, try clicking LMB and generate proxy. Uh, wait. What what the hell is LMB? Left mouse left mouse button and say generate. Generate proxy. Let's just, yeah, generate optimized media, maybe. Yeah, so the main issue I have doing this, I, I this probably will help fix some of this, but... Uh, No, there's just like a second or two two lag there. That's so weird. I've removed like the resolution. I've dropped it down. We have playback. Uh, we have proper render, smart render crash. We went ahead, generated optimized media. There's just a... Like a two second delay on the audio. Oh. Yeah, maybe it didn't transcode correctly. Maybe. 
I mean, well, there's one way to check that. Let's just, uh, let's just go. Should be an open file location. Getting help on the terminal can be sometimes problematic, but. No, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Getting help in terminal yes. is actually really easy. Let's say you know CP's copy, and you're like, oh, I need that. Well, you have the help command, but it usually gives you a lot. Mm. All right, Chris. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It looks totally okay. Totally okay. Man, I just want to... I do have a 2060 in another room. I could go rip that out of that PC and toss it in this one. Oh, good night. Yeah. How much? Are, how much is an Nvidia card? Do have they come down in price? What, what do we got? Like maybe like a Nvidia forty seventy six hundred for a forty seventy. It's not that bad. I don't know where that is. Uh, what? What's the thirty seventy? Well, if you're gonna go thirty seven, you might as well go with the forty seventy at these prices. If you're gonna go off Amazon, did the forty seventy prices fall? Because I remember them being much more expensive. Or am I just misremembering? Ooh, 3060s, 425 ish. Dang. What about uh, used? Let's check old eBay. 3070. Get a lot better price on a used, about 300 bucks. A reference card, that's garbage. PNY, that's not. Too awful, not my fave, not my first or second or third or fourth or fifth pick, but it's in there. Um, ooh, EVGA 3070, that would be a nice one at 350. Let's see what the card looks like. Looking for oil spots. These are stock, aren't they? Except for these two. These are the only... He didn't show the back of the card. Looks almost too clean, though. Huh. Portland, Oregon shipping. It's not too bad. Oh, gosh. I don't know, y'all. What do you guys think? I got a 260. It's a 260 or 2060, I should say. Man, I guess I could just open it up. Oh, Grism. Grism has something. Fix uh, audio latency in Resolve. Yes, I am totally using Pipeware Pulse Audio. Ah. Uh.
What you want to do is basically install Pulse Audio or Pulse Audio also along with Pipewire. Since the audio playback is known, a known problem of Pipewire, you don't need to reboot your system nor terminate your session. Just restart DaVinci Resolve and you'll be good. Once Resolve detects Pulse Audio is installed, it will use that instead of Pipewire. Okay. Let's quit that. Really? It can't be that simple. Let's go Pulse, Audio, Also. It's probably going to need an Allow Racing. Yeah, so it's going to have to swap Pipewire Pulse Audio with Pulse Audio. Oh, gosh. DaVinci Resolve. Oh, you guys suck. Oh, read the edit part. Okay. Edit. After months, I noticed this is a bad solution overall for having to... Yeah, you're going to have to uninstall and pick Pulse if you want to go that way. Good solution is to install Pipewire Pulse. Oh. Pipewire Pulse. I think it's already there, right? Let's do a search. Um, Pulse Audio. Already installed. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, so screw it. We're switching. We're just going to switch. We're going to ditch pipe wire. <sighs> because even if I do it this way, I already have like pulse audio. Let's try also. I think that's already installed. So we already have pipe wire, pulse audio, and pipe wire also installed. It's just an incompatibility with resolve and pipe wire. Or you could just use Windows. <laughs> but then what's the fun in that? And I think the version of Pipewire Pulse is a little too old, too. Pipewire is required for Wayland. All right. Yep, yep. Uh, Pipewire Jack. Uh, we're not really using Jack, though. So that should not matter. Oh. So we could just do this and then just go dash dash allow erasing. All right, here we go. Screw it. Let's get it. We're going to just purge uh, Pipewire, switch it over to pipe, uh, Pulse Audio. Um, Pavu Control. Let's see what our configuration looks like. All that looks good. Output, good, good. All right. DaVinci Resolve it. When you do allow erasing, it actually purges pipe wire. I think we got rid of pipe wire, didn't we? Let's make sure. Just to make sure. Oh, never mind. My bad. Remove pipe wire star. Oh. Yes, allow, remove everything. No. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> All right, let's not pull a Linus. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. 
Uh, let's see what we got for Alsa. Let's go Alsa Utils. Yes. Um, Rel 9 switch from Pipewire to Pulse. Ugh. All right. Da, 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 da. So we're going to go DNF swap Pipewire Pulse. All right. Nope, that's going to try and delete my whole distro again. Son of a biscuit eater, all right. Wait, wait. It's getting better. It's getting better. One second. Let's just... uh. Let's just copy this. Failed to... I think we need to reboot and we should be fine. Um, failed to connect a bus, no medium found. We need to get rid of pipe wire one way or another though. I just don't want to have to reinstall all this stuff. Alrighty. Well, maybe. This one's not removing the whole distro anymore. Uh, da, 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 da. Nothing I can't get back. We'll just get FFmpeg and MP4 ba MPV back, and we'll be fine. MPV. Ah, it's getting that darn pipe wire right there. Darn it. Let's just reboot. Oh, no pseudo. Oh, oh well. We'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. Let's see if we get our desktop. <laughs> ah, okay. Here we go. Oh. Oh, user. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. My bad. Um, let's go ahead and go start. Boop. All right, we got that. Let's go Pavu control. How are we looking? Looking better. Looking better. Configuration. Let's turn that off. Turn that off. Got this. We got our playback. Things are looking better. And then when I go to install MPV, all right, let's go ahead and remove pipe, or let's do a list installed grab pipe wire. Dial. What's that giving me? See, anytime I try to remove pipe wire completely, it's trying to remove the entire OS. That sucks. Okay.
Yeah, yeah. Pipewire is better nowadays. It's just uh, we're getting lag in Resolve. Like two second lag on all of our audio clips. So I'm like, oh, lordy. So, I mean, it, technically, I think we're switched over now. So let's go resolve and see what happens. Oh, perfect. Absolutely wonderful. Yep. No latency anymore. There's just no audio. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Did you install also plugins Pulse Audio? Ooh, okay. Let's see if that works. Plugins Pulse Audio. Mm. Yeah, it's already installed. Yeah, we were using trying to use a codec that's not supported in Linux. Supported in Windows, but not supported in Linux. Because... Yeah. I bet you... Let's switch back. Um, so this wants to swap Pipewire Pulse Audio with Pulse Audio. Let's just go the other way now. Uh, let's come back to here. Um, let's just disable this service real fast. All right. And then we're just going to allow erasing. So now it's going to remove that, switch it with pipe wire. Oh, for Pete's sake. Is there anything else I needed to grab while I was here? I can't remember. No, okay. Um, oh, well, this is going to obviously need to be closed, but... Let's just grab MPV as well. See if there's any libraries in there. Probably need to grab some FFmpeg. Get that one as well. All right. Let's just go into FCP 2023. All right, MPV footage. Does that give me audio? Probably not. Getting help on the terminal. Okay, sweet. So that that brings everything back. Go back into Resolve. Oh, you know what? I think I'm forcefully quitting Resolve, and it's really not liking that because of my hotkeys. Ah, uh, mental note. Do not do that, Chris. No, yeah. I used Gaten Live for like 500, uh, 500 videos there, Don. It's okay. For a beginning editing, it's fine. But as you start color correcting and doing a little more advanced edits and you actually care about your time, it makes a big difference switching to a, a legit editor. <laughs> Maybe switch to Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, that's also an option. Um, let's go resolve again. I don't think that would fix it, but... Yeah, you never know. Uh, oh, that's right. Let's reboot.
Oh, yeah. I could only imagine. Any kind of Adobe product going through Wine is just going to be awful. Awful, awful mess. Hey, what's up, D-User? How you doing? All right, let's see what we got with the Resolve. I don't think this is going to change anything. I think that latency is still going to be there. But it's worth a shot. Oh. I guess it fixed itself. Okay, so that does work. Got to remember to control Q and getting out of resolve, though, because it does not like uh, forceful quits uh, in Linux. Okay. So, bug bug resolved. Yes, I, I've noticed that too on Windows, uh, Geyser. But uh, I did this. This last bit was an actual bug in Linux. It was something with the packaging. Maybe it was like a dependency that was missing, and then us just switching between Pipewire and Alsa, and then back to Pipewire. Or yeah, that that seemed to fix it. So I don't know what happened. So it is fine now. So we're, we're good. So we got Resolve working. We have our AMD card going. Now it's just taking video properly from OBS and then making sure we can ingest that. Now, oh yeah, yeah, we, we got OO too. We might save OO for tomorrow because that's going to be... That ain't going to be a quick one. <laughs> yeah, we're, ooh, configuration is long. <laughs> okay. Usually also plugins, Pulse Audio fixes it. Maybe when I installed Pulse Audio, it grabbed that one plugin and then that was fine. I bet you that's what it is. Yeah, it's always a mess. It's always a mess. I guess it's just a personal preference. What's blur? Ooh is a, a title bar. And this is what we're looking at for ooh. Now, you see our title bar up here, but I was like, ah, I'm not really that satisfied with it. I like this title bar a bit. I think this looks, uh, this looks pretty good. You know? From a desktop perspective, it's pretty clean. I was like, I can do that. And he's done most of the title bars in ooh. I feel like that would be a little bit more of a clean aesthetic and then we clean this out get that going a little bit better feel like that would be good doing good fluffy we've already disabled se linux oh blur is a band well that's from the 90s i remember them song two right that was their claim to fame Gnome top bar. Get out of here. <laughs> Omar's just trolling now. Um, is Blur a top bar? Oh, that's... Yeah, that's that's an extension. Gnome extension. Um, hmm. All right, take it easy, Kaiser. Thanks for dropping in, man. Appreciate all the suggestions. Why I mess around banging my head against the wall for Da Vinci. But we got it. We got Da Vinci up. I think we got a good plan of attack going forward with probably going switching over to an NVIDIA card. And then once we get the NVIDIA card in, I think switching from AMD to NVIDIA, or we could switch. I could see how the AMD card does in Windows on the inside box, too. And swap those out. I'm tempted to do that. 
Maybe. I'm thinking about it. Hmm. Oh, in PyCom? Yeah. We could take a leak. What does our PyCom file look like? Uh, we got shadow background blurring. We, we just do blur size and background. Something like this. like that would work so this is what we have right now and then if we do a reload flip over to here that's not really blurred is it let's see let's give it a reboot Yeah, I might just swap the inside NVIDIA card with uh, my Linux one out here. See how it goes. All right, so this is our regular background. They boot it up. Maybe the blur effect is just not... Yeah, it's not really that pronounced, is it? Let's do PS aux. I mean, obviously we have PyCom going, right? Oh, uh, the PyCom file is actually in uh, BSPWM. I'm editing the wrong file. I was like, man, that's weird. All right, let's just dump that PyCom file. Let's go BSPWM. We have the PyCom here. Let's go blur. Background blurring. A 12. Let's see what you guys think. Do you like a blurred background or not? Oh, lordy. That just removed all transparency effects. Hmm. Oh, did I mess up? I would say I have a wrong chatter Reno. Let's see what we got. I'm going to just pull in uh, what chat said. Uh, Indie Twitch says dual quasi blur size eight deviation. True. It looks like it's emptied blur background. True. Uh, Background blurring, deviation, was the deviation, blur deviation equals true. Okay. And let's come up here and put eight for that one. Oh, I don't really want to blur the frame. Blur background fixed. Hmm. Blur background exclude dock, window type, desktop. Ah, uh, okay. 3x3 box, blur background exclude, dock, desktop. Yep. That looks good. So technically, this should be fine. Uh, was there anything when it comes to blur background, fixed or frame? Let's take a peek. Blur background true mm -hmm. frame false 
fixed false. Uh, so that's fine, 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 fine. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was one other setting here, blur method right here. Let's just grab that. Oh, and then we also have the problem with the lines. That's probably why it's really messed up. We're not... Oh, I always do this when I'm doing C-sharp. I always forget the silly uh, semicolons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfection. Now... I guess I don't I can't tell a difference. Can you guys? It's very slight. It, you guys can tell a difference? It is better. I like it. I wonder if you could make like a thunar transparent a little bit. How does DaVinci run? DaVinci runs good. The big thing now is we've got no latency. We can do it, but it requires me transcoding projects. So so it works. It's just now I so I could I have a couple options here. I think what I'll do is look at I'll just change the way I, I film, you know, instead of trying to make the other way work. If we look at the codec list, let's just uh, come on over here. Let's go video codecs. All right. So this is what we have. It doesn't give me warm, fluffy feelings seeing CUDA in front of CentOS, but hey, so I know ProRes has options inside of inside of OBS, and we could probably do a 422 regular export with an MOV at probably could get around twelve thousand. Let me look. Let me look over here one second. Yeah, we could switch out the card, but I'm going to see if I can't get away with not. Because right now, for recording, I am streaming. I'm, I'm recording as an encoder at X264. And the bit rate is 8,000. So I could re bring it into a ProRes 422 8,000 bit rate, maybe. Let's see if I can get around an 8,000 bit rate on a ProRes. I don't know if ProRes goes that low because ProRes really wants, you know, 30,000 or more uh, on their bit rates. So, but I would love to hit the ProRes 422 8,000 bit rate. Let's see if that's possible. Yeah. Let's take a peek. ProRes OBS 422. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. So you have MOV, lead blank. Oh boy. Yeah, this guy's. Dude, he's filling up a hard drive with like a five minute clip with this kind of bit rate. So here's your your common bit res for ProRes. Ooh, yikes. That is that is costly. So just a standard 1080p 
ProRes wants 38,000 bitrate. That's going to be brutal. We're we're four and a half hours into this stream. That would be that'd be over a terabyte. Zoo, it's going good, man. We're we we've got it done. I think uh, it's really uh, we've really turned a corner. It was really frustrating there for a bit. I'm sorry if I was getting angry, uh, but we've really turned the corner. Uh, old Rocky Linux is feeling good. Things are flying. We're zipping through. We got a lot of lot of performance. Blah. We got all this stuff. And uh, DaVinci Resolve is kind of working. We we figured out some Linux limitations of DaVinci Resolve. It does run, and we can transcode into a format that it likes. But I wonder if we could do a ProRes 1080p at. 8,000. Ooh, that's really low, though. Let's see if that works. I don't think anybody's that crazy to try that. I'll, I wonder what happens when you do ProRes with such a low bitrate. What does it do? If you don't, you don't drive it with as much bitrate as ProRes wants. Is it still better than encoding at 264? ProRes versus H264 bitrate. Oh, when I installed the graphic environment. Oh, this one's BSPWM is what I ended up choosing. I, I'm familiar with BSPWM and I kind of love it. So this is kind of, obviously we still got to work on the bar up here. I'm going to probably switch this out with ooh, something a little more, a little more artistic. And that'll be nice. But everything else is like really, really snappy. I really dig it. And we have pretty much everything going. Oh, you know, we didn't try a game though. Uh, they probably don't even have Steam on here. Let's see. Yeah, we're not going to get Steam through the standard store, I don't think. Steam. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing there for Steam. But what we could do... Uh, I choose Rocky just because the founder of Rocky Linux is who created CentOS in the beginning. Really, uh, I think it's Greg something rather. Really smart guy. And I, I've never had a problem with Rocky yeah, on the server realm of things. Could flat pack it. Yeah, we're, we already have RPM Fusion, don't we? Yeah, we have RPM Fusion. It's just not on uh, Enterprise Linux 9. So RPM Fusion does not have Steam on this version. Let's see what... Uh, let's see what they say. Oh, no. No, don't do it this way. Oh, no. Grabbing and installing a 32-bit library from an OpenSUSE repo. Yikes. Don't do that. That is just silliness. Okay. Well, like everything else, let's just see how Steam runs on Nix, Nix packages. Dude, we've installed more in... Oh, let's see. What, what are we at? <laughs> Nix is catching up to catching up to our, our base repo. I mean that's kind of impressive. Look at that. 749 packages now from Nix. That's what we're using for the the OS manager too. I mean that's that's pretty hilarious. 
how much can we load steam? I mean, this is like, it's almost like having Rocky as your foundation for like the system D and all your, your core functionality. And then everything else from a graphic point of view is like sitting on Nick's packages right here with Rocky being below it. And I kind of love it. I know this is like, so not the way most people think to do it. But I kind of really, really dig this method. Yeah, at this rate, you could just install base Gentoo and use nothing but Nick's package for packages. 100%. Yeah, we could totally cheese a Gentoo install. That's how good Nick's is. Like, wow. I just never have run Steam through uh, through here. Yeah, I even I, I on my Steam Deck I even use Nix. <laughs> it, it was a little tricky getting that installed. I I made a little how-to article on how to do Nix through the Steam Deck because I got tired of using Flatpak. All right, that was an insane amount of libraries. We got to look at the NeoFetch again. It has to be catching up. <laughs> Pretty soon, Rocky Linux is going to be less. There's going to be less Rocky Linux packages in here than there will be Nix packages. That's that's how close we are. We are at 1,158 Nix packages and 1,379 RPM packages or, or, or Rocky packages. So, oh, geez. That's, that's too awesome. All right. Steam. Steam. I wonder if it's going to grab any of uh, my... I don't think the cache and everything would be up to date with this. Uh, no desktop environment. We're not using one. Yeah, if you got a, if you got a Steam Deck, for sure, check that out. Because having, having Nix on the Steam Deck is clutch. Okay, GLX choose visual failed. Hmm. What do we got? Any... Peer certificate cannot be authenticated with given CA certificates. Hmm. GLX choose visual failed. Let's see if we can't find a solution for this. Hmm. Okay, this is missing. Oh, it's missing NVIDIA G. No, not NVIDIA GL. We were using. Oh, we're using the AMD. That might be problematic. We'll see. These do look like NVIDIA drivers, but it's probably the GL from our proprietary AMD drivers that are causing issues. Ooh, might, might need to think outside the box on this one. Oh, UWU fetch? Okay. We can grab UWU fetch. Probably a 32-bit driver package. That's what I'm thinking as well, Ashlyn. Hmm. Hmm. 
I don't really like how Steam was installed through Nix. So I think what I'm going to do here, though, uh, Nix dash ENVQ. Let's go Nix dash ENV. Um, Uh, let's just get rid of Steam. Okay. Ah. So we don't have Steam installed here. You know what it probably is? Yeah, this is such a silly, such a rookie mistake. You guys will laugh. Uh, enable 32-bit rel. I don't think multi-library is even enabled. I think we got to get multi lib going. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, how do you enable 32 bit on rail? I don't, I can't say I've ever done that. This says you just force that through, but I don't think that's right. Probably group install. We can probably do that. Oh, why not use chat GPT? I just keep forgetting, man. Got to update my tool set. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can get. There's no compatibility libraries later. So probably... DNF list group install list group groups DNF groups list okay that's it so All right, let's try Jet GPT. Oh man, I gotta sign in my Google. Oh please. Oh dang. Portal, portal open. One second, I'm still, still trying to sign in. My Google can be a little bit problematic sometimes. Okay. Oh, that's right. I do not make it easy to sign in to my Google. Like at all. Probably for the best though, right? All right, we're good. Yes. All right, uh, install 32-bit libraries on rel. Nine. How to. Okay. So it says just enable power toys. Shoop. All right. Great.
power tools, uh, that doesn't exist. All right, fine. Velo groups, games, and entertainment, fonts, graphical internet. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why my Brave titles are so weird. I did something to... Uh, I'll, I'll have to track that down. Let's take a look at your link. All right. Multilib, RPM config, rel, Rocky Linux. Oh, okay. This looks like what we need. Multilib tricks. All right. That looks like it worked. DNF update. Pseudo DNF search Steam. DNF search Steam. DNF update. Hmm. Well, we definitely got the 32 bit libraries in there. Um,. Maybe there's an RPM for Steam. Let's go chat GPT-4. Give us max, max IAI greatness. Install Steam on RHEL. Uh, let's just say Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux 9.1. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pretty sure we've done all that. Installed required dependencies. Then download the RPM package. Extract the package. Uh-huh. Not bad, chat GPT. Not bad. All right. Let's do it. All right. Let's get us the latest old steam. Spam. Ah. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Is there stuff in there? Oh, no, no. It's just Steam Launcher. Okay. I was like, oh, no. Oh, there it is. Nice. Uh, That's a little wrong, though. Should be Steam Release. Oh, that's all kinds of wrong. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I don't want to do a flat pack. Oh, yeah, yeah. I bought chat GPT. I was using it a bunch, especially when I'm programming. Uh... This changed. ChatGPT is wrong, actually, here. I want to say... I think this might actually install it, though. Launcher script.
Ooh, Don said there's a uh, third party support for some like H.264, H.265, and AAC. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to have to try that. Uh, Flatpak Steam works better on Fedora. Really? Okay. What's the point of streaming if you're basically not reading chat? Yeah. Can't just read chat. You got to get shit done, man. That's the whole point of streaming. If you think you want to be... All right. Yeah. All right. Check this out. What is this? Oh, I got to have it. Main concept. Kodak plugin for DaVinci Resolve Studio. Does it work in regular or do I have to have studio? Studio is the $300 one. I mean, I'll buy it. I, I'm already using DaVinci Resolve like a madman, so. But I would really enjoy to have a decent Kodak in Linux. Okay, one-time license, 99 bucks. That makes sense. So you pay a hundred bucks, you get the license and, but if you just buy, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, it should automatically get the Kodak though. Yeah. So the studio actually gives you the Kodak for two, six, four, but it's $300. So you do. <laughs> you do pay, but that's cool though. I think I'll I'll leave that up. Let me copy that. Just put that in my old brave here. Come back to it. Okay. So I think we're we're almost to the point where we're just going to install it via flat pack, but I was kind of curious to see the official method of installing it through Steam. I kind of think that we could just install the RPM file directly from Steam. Steam powered. We could just go steampowered.com or Steam, install Steam, install Steam. Oh, it just gives you the dev package. Steam RPM package. Yeah, so this is how most people do it. But again, we don't we don't have Steam. We have install flat pack, install the flat pack repo. And then we can do it that way. Yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. I think that would be a little bit cleaner. It just makes more sense. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, when you look at this way, though, I think, like, there's Steam for 7 and 8, but there is no 9. You could use something else, but then you start to dive into kind of dangerous territory. You kind of only want to pick it for your repo. Since we're using Enterprise Linux 9, um... It's not really, we can't use one of these packages because it's going to call for a bunch of dependencies that are older than what we have. But a, a good thought, a good thought. So we'll grab the flat pack. And since someone already said the flat pack works better in Fedora than the standard install, I'm, I'm curious to try it. No, no, no. You don't want to you don't want to mismatch your your packages. 
even if it works, you're, you're asking for problems. And the title of the stream is the most stable install. <laughs> so stability over everything else is the thing. So if we can compartmentalize it, we will. Uh, we tried to compartmentalize Steam first with Nix. I then tried to manually install it. We could probably try and build it directly in, in RHEL. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's like, ah, I probably don't want to do that either. Flat pack's probably the method we want to do. So flat pack list, we should see our steam and then we can just go flat pack run and toss old steam in here. All right. Steam input, you will seem to be, don't seem to be installed. Okay. Yeah, usually flat pack does not is not the most performant for me. Now, they said something about UDEV, which if we look here. I think I have a pretty good pretty good little All right, one second. One second here. Let me log in. All right. It's loading up. One second. Okay. Hmm. Let's just change these settings. I don't really want to be bothered with a bunch of uh, notifications and stuff on this PC. I guess I should be doing work. Oh, let's just disable everything. Perfect. Alrighty, and we'll just toss this into a new one. And then one second again, I gotta change a few settings and we should be ready. All right. Let's see what we got. All right. Don't want var cache as the default. Are we going to be able to get outside of this folder easily is the question. If not, I did make a not a widely botched YouTube video a while back about flat pack permissions. We might need to expand that. I think we might be able to get away with it. But alas, no. Wait, 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 wait. No, so flat pack permissions are actually wrong in this one. So I actually made a video not too long ago. I think a uh, flat seal. Have you? Has anybody in chat used flat seal? All right, take it easy. Yeah, flat seal. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Omar already mentioned it. Yeah. 
Oh, look at that. You guys already, you guys already knew about flat seal. I can't remember how I installed it. I just remember talking about it. <laughs> Let's install it. Uh, da, da, da. I've talked about AI a bunch on the on stream in the past, but uh, too long didn't watch of those is AI will just make those that are good at coding much more efficient. So you'll just be able to do a lot more with less, which is great. But how will it impact it? Uh, I think um, it's I don't know if it'll impact coding and programming a ton i think it'll just make it to where uh, i think like software companies that only build software for folks i think a lot of those we're gonna have probably struggle a little bit as more people are gonna have capabilities of doing a lot more with less so a company could hire a programmer and that one programmer could do the job of 10 or 20 programmers i think that's uh in the future so a lot of software companies will probably end up having issues, but like big business and those types of things that and hire programmers, they may not have to hire less programmers, but it's not going to impact it as much as you think. Just my two cents. Finally, Adobe will fall. <laughs> One we can only pray. That would be the best outcome in the whole AI uh, renaissance. Oh man, that would be that would just be beautiful. Uh let's go flat pack run and just launch flat seal. You know what? Let's just quit this. Let's go steam. Yeah, AI is definitely overhyped. It reminds me of, like the crypto boom of a couple years back. Everybody putting their hat in the ring. Um, let's see. Steam. GPU acceleration, shared memory. Da, da, da. I don't think we need to allow virtualization. Uh, da, 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 da. Pulse audio. Probably, probably do need Dbus, maybe. File system. I think uh, we'll create a new bit. Just put this in. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Probably do home steam library. Is that a is that a is that an actual file? Yep, steam library. There it is. All right, cool. Making sure I'm not making stuff up. I don't think, I, if anything, fresh programmers. So where I see the world going, this is kind of a pretty cynical take, kind of a really hot one too. But um, I think those that have skills, especially those coming up, if I was 20 years old, I think I would have, I, or at least I hope this is what I would have done. I would have just said, screw all businesses. I'm just going to do my own thing. I have the capabilities with a lot of these tools that exist today that didn't exist 20 years ago to make my own program, to make my own company, to make a lot of this stuff. And, and you have so much knowledge at your fingertips. Um, on the flip side of that, you know, so, so you have this world of possibilities for a 20 year old coming out to where they can just be a overnight millionaire with as much knowledge out there. The flip side of that is you also have a lot of disadvantages I don't have uh, when I was 20. I didn't, there was no smartphones. There was no social media. There was no time wasting or endless scrolling or uh, not nearly as much social validation as you get uh, that I see many 20 year olds just craved, star, starved and need, uh, so to speak, or they think they need. So yeah, that's the flip side of it, you know. 
the 20 years of 20 year olds of today have every advantage to make it huge way bigger than I probably ever could have with as much knowledge at the fingertips but also have a lot of social disadvantages out there with social media and those things that cripple people and cripple the the 20 to 30 year old crowd uh with with what we have just just my hot take <laughs> it's pretty hot but kind of kind of how i see it oh uh, let's see list of home directories relative sandbox files dot i think that's fine I think we can get around that. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's save that out. Um, is there a save button? I forget. No, I think it auto saves. All right, great. So we have that now. I don't think it automatically. Oh, it does. Okay. Oh, this is Steam over here. Okay, well, let's close that. Close that. Pump that over here. All right, one second. Just going to change one thing. I'm going to see if I have access. I'm actually trying not to dox myself. We'll see if I succeed. I'm sure I will dox myself by the end of the stream. Let's see if we have access to our folders now. Steam library right there. Is that a hey. no, there's no games in there. Dang it. All right, remove that. Let's go one more. Just toss that over here. Come on, where is that at? Maybe right there. Aha, there it is. There's all our, there's all our beautiful, beautiful stuff. So then we just make that default. Perfect. All right, so the flat pack is all set up. It should have all of our files in. Let's just see. Oh, really? Steam beta? All right, let's see if it can sync that. It looks like it's working. Download of all of Cyberpunk. Okay. Well, let's see how high my, my download speed can get on stream. This is megabytes, so we're getting close to a gig connection. Gigabit. Sometimes if you really want to make it look cool. What you can do... Show it in megabits. Where's that? It always looks more impressive in megabits. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if that setting even exists. Oh, here we go. Display bits and rates. Yeah, look at that. Let's take a look. We got some fading, rounded corners. Oh, you got the rounded corners. I'm not a big fan. Well, chat, what do you... Let's ask. I, I always want. I always want to know this. What do you all think of uh, of it? I, I'd be curious to see that. One second here. Got to sign into everything today. Oh, cool. At least I didn't have any two-factor. All right. Let's let's take a poll, and we're gonna say, "Do you like rounded corners on your windows?" Yes, no. I'm kind of curious to see what the results of this are. 
as I look through this PyCon file, I'm like, ooh, maybe. Oh, did I close that PyCon file? Damn it, I did, didn't I? Oh, wait, no, I didn't. I say, I'm kind of a square corner kind of guy. Yeah, I, I kind of want to maximize my real estate. Did I, did I just crash my polygvar? I think I did. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. Um, so this one's rounded corners. Rounded corn, rounded just feels more natural. Couldn't have set it better myself. <laughs> uh, so I would be doing some push-ups today, Jalopy, but we got bench. We got bench here in like an hour. I'm doing, I think, 50, 50 reps on bench over an hour. So it's going to be, my chest is going to be messed up after that. Rounded leaves gaps. I hate gaps. HJM, I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of with you. Uh, we do need to get polybarred back, don't we? Wait, let's just do that. Probably the easiest way. Let's just do a launch, right? We have, we do need to fix that. What's this? Oh, man, steam, steam looks rough up here. I got to fix that. All right. I think we, I think we're going to get rid of polybar altogether though. How are we looking? Ooh, you know, look at that. It's pretty well split down the middle. I'd say yes, edges it out. I'm going to give no a vote just because I'm more of a square, square, square kind of guy. <laughs> oh, man. Too great, too great. Here we go. Final final vote comes in. Yes to rounded corners in your windows. Well, that's cool. And then we got our blurring. Generals all commented out. GLX back end looks good. Uh, focus, true debug. I like this. This is a solid PyCom file. Let's just grab the raw. We're going to just grab it from Indie Leo from earlier. And we're going to Throw that into our, our current config. I just like making stuff, I think. So here's our current PyCom. Let's move PyCom.com to old PyCom.com. And then we're just going to W get the new PyCom.com. All righty. And I think we can just do a reload. All right. Uh, it didn't like something. Did I miss something? Uh, da da da. da BSPWM. Huh. What did it not like? Hmm. I guess we could just run PyCom independently. When are push-ups back? Uh, we'll do them on Thursday. I mean, I'm going to be sore as hell, but I'll do them on Thursday. We'll get them back going. All right. Um, we did reload the script, but it didn't quite take. I think we have an error somewhere in this file. 
let's look at our BSPRC. And then what we're going to do, let's just grab this, go bam. Okay, so we got GLX extensionless error, fatal error, root visual is not GL visual. You guys got that? Well, what do we do here? What do we do? GLX visual is not visual. Um, all righty. Mm, let's look at our old PyCom GLX. Oh, I was using X render instead of GLX with VSync true. So maybe we just switch over to X render. Or we could do a XR GLX hybrid. Ah, I think X render will be fine. I think if we had an NVIDIA card, GLX would work just fine. But we did not. X render, sig fence, blah, 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 blah. All righty. Ah, look at that. Uh, blur method, dual Kawazi. It's not, <laughs> it's not at all how you say that. Uh, it's not compatible with the X render backend. Hmm. Blur method. Pycom's a compositor, colon. Gives you opacity in Windows. So usually you have a compositor, a compositor in every single system. It's just different, each one. Um, new, thanks for the prime. Change back end to GLX. We ran into the GLX issue with the back end. Of, we could try the hybrid. Let's uh, go into our old PyCom, come down to GLX. We could do like an XR hybrid like this. So let's yank that. And then uh, PyCom. Okay, well, not going to populate anything for me. Uh, I got to so redo my Vim. Oh, in Vim's, what? You're not even, you're not even going to give me the same directory. Rude. Okay. So we could change that to XRGLX hybrid. Let's see what that does. Ah. Okay. So let's change that back to GLX. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, I need to do experimental backends, PyCom. Okay. So if we go experimental backends. Oh, I don't know. Do I see the option for experimental backends? I scrolled right past it. Uh, let's just do a grep. Oops. Uh, legacy backends. So we could do. Yeah, legacy backends kind of makes sense since we're using PyCom through Nix. So it would actually be something like legacy backends. Close. But it's probably because it's a Nix package. 
Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of a weird one because, it, again, this is a really not meant for compositing. A rail-based stuff doesn't even offer PyCom through its repositories. Uh, at least I don't think. Let's search PyCom. Pretty sure it doesn't, though. Hell, I don't think it has Compton. Compton was came before PyCom, and it doesn't have that either. So you'd have to do probably an X render. And then let's change the blur method. I think it'll be fine. So we'll just go a different different direction. X renderer. And then we just got to change the blur method. Uh, what blur methods are there? Pycom blur methods X renderer. Blur method okay oh there's a pycom uh flatback wow i think we just do a gaussian blur or we could just do a box for the method Okay, these blur methods are not supported by legacy backends. <clears throat> so I think we have to do kernel for a convolutional blur. Whatever the hell that means. But since we're using legacy backend, that's what makes the most sense. It's kind of wild. So we'll do a VIW paste. So let's switch that to blur method kernel. You think that'll work? Uh... Oh, uh, GLX. All right. Seem to work, but did not. All right. Was this not PyCom? Thought this is a PyCom. Yeah, PyCom. A compositor for X11. That's it. Uh, Zen kernel? Eh, not a big fan of Zen kernel. I'd, I'd rather do like TDK or uh, Zen mod. Probably would be my 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 go to. A bad B flag, or just be a B flag? Okay. Hmm. I got this weird, like, fade effect going on now. Huh. I don't like it. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Feels like it's, like, lagging almost. Yeah, the fade needs to be faster. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. So the fade's doing too much. Okay, let's just modify our uh, PyCom. Should go Vim, Com, BSPWM, PyCom. 
So that should be relatively easy. Fading true, step in, step out. So with the fade, fade in step point three, can we just like take a, take a bit off that? Do like that. We'll just reload. Yeah, let's just uh, speed that up a bit. It's not bad, right? Get the blur, it kind of blurs that background a bit. I like it. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I, I switched it up and just kind of took that uh, fade effect and made it a little bit quicker. Seems to be good. It does add some animation and other things to the windows, which I didn't expect. Yeah. That's pretty neat. All right, well, tomorrow I think what we'll do is break into doing like the title bar or something. Um, oh man, usually I do my programming on Thursdays though. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Figure, we'll figure it out what we're doing tomorrow. Probably finish it. I would like to finish that. And I got to look into probably some kind of encoder or some su such a situation for the old I'll, I'll do some probably offline a uh, rendering and recording through obs and see if i can't get obs doing like prores at like a low bit rate i don't think that exists but i'm gonna do some funky tests and we'll find out so all right y'all see y'all tomorrow i'm out of here We'll get, it. we'll get a good one going on. I'll try to enable either pull-ups, push-ups, something tomorrow. Uh, as I know today, we we're kind of lazy. Or I was lazy, I should say. I just kind of wanted to focus more on getting the system up. Although, you know, at the end of all of this, I really love our, our, our system. Like, this right here is nice. I just want to redo the top title bar, make that clean really have a nice aesthetic i actually kind of like the just a hint of rounded on these corners um and i think that's gonna be great so really overall this is gonna be a really good stable system and it's really kind of amazing how you can build pretty much anything on any kind of stable base in linux now like it used to be oh well that dependency's not there you're just host and now man i mean you get it configured just right and you can just build anything on top of it. So I'm curious to see, we'll definitely have to dive into virtualization in this because I really need to get like QMU up with a bunch of different VMs. We also need to dive into just the statics. What all can we, we need to really make this look nice. Because it doesn't look very nice right now. It's functional, but not nice. Uh, and then also resolve, really ironing out the rest of the resolve kinks to where I can actually edit videos in here without up into a windows desktop uh, all those things are really important uh this is just really a kind of a neat system setup that i've kind of digging and i i'm hoping i'll stay on it for longer than five days 